بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ونور قلوبنا وقرة أعيننا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين نوانا تعلم وتعليم وتذكر وتذكر والنفع والانتفاع والفارة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء إلى الهدى ودلالة عن الخير ابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى مع لطف وعافية برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إن نسألك العلم لدني والمشرب الصافي الهني يا وهاب يا غني اللهم إن نسألك العلم لدني والمشرب الصافي الهني يا وهاب يا غني اللهم إن نسألك العلم لدني والمشرب الصافي الهني يا وهاب يا غني I intend to learn and to teach to remind and to be reminded to give reminder and to be reminded to benefit and to gain benefit to to call on to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to call to guidance, to point towards goodness. All of this I intend in seeking the good pleasure of my Lord, of my Creator and His closeness and His reward. All of it, Ya Allah, grant us in gentle kindness and in good health. Ya Arhamar Rahimin. Ya Allah, we ask you for knowledge from yourself and a pure and refreshing drink of knowledge, Ya Allah. We ask you for knowledge from yourself, and a pure and refreshing drink of knowledge, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you for knowledge from yourself, and a pure and refreshing drink of knowledge. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Um, MashaAllah, I, 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 <laughs> I'm actually very excited um, if, uh, to, to conduct today's session, like today's talk. And... I know, I know, I know. I'm keeping my video off. Um, it's just my own uh preference, right? To actually keep um to actually keep my video off, right? So I hope the slides suffice, <laughs> um, for you to look for something to look at, um, and I and I apologize, right? That that um, I I I just prefer not to put my face up. Um, uh, when I'm online, you know, inshallah. Right, so I apologize for that first and foremost. Um, alhamdulillah. Um. Uh, uh, inshallah, uh, to this course, the reason why I'm, I'm, I am excited <laughs> and also, it, um, uh, I would say, it, uh, I am humbled, right, for, you know, um, uh, in, to conduct this course because this topic right here, right now in front of you, it is of, it is in fact, not, not off, but it is the most important, um, topic to be discussed with regards, um, to a person's life, right, first and foremost, a person's life because it will be their relationship with their prayer, and with the Quran, it is the most important topic because it is our very primary and foundational um, connection to our Creator, Subhanahu wa Taala, to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And this connection, you know, is strongest right through our prayer, and it is strongest uh, through the Quran that we recite. And this connection, it it begins from a very, 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 very uh, young age. You know, um, even up, if, and and as our teachers would say. You know, even from um before a woman gets pregnant, the connection already begins. You know, subhanallah, before she gets pregnant. I'm not, I'm not saying while she's pregnant, before she even gets pregnant. You know, subhanallah. There's a story of Sayyidina Umar, you know, whereby a woman came up to Sayyidina Umar with her baby, you know, a newborn, you know, and he, she asked Sayyidina Umar, oh, uh, uh, leader of the believers, you know, how do I bring up my child to be a good Muslim? And Sayyidina Umar said to her, you came nine months too late. <laughs> you know, mashallah. But of course, it's not to, to discourage anyone, but it is, you know, just, just to, to, to give us an understanding, an idea, right, that traditionally in Islam, and traditionally I mean, you know, for generations, for hundreds of years, for generations in Islam, um, the preparation, you know, for parenting um, begins from the point a person reaches pu puberty, <laughs> mashallah. <laughs> right, when they, when someone when a human being reaches puberty, they begin the preparation um uh to develop you know or to nurture the next generation, and that makes all the difference. You know, subhanallah, as to how early they they, they prepare. 
But Alhamdulillah, you know, at least, you know, uh, wherever we're at in our life, however old our kids are, you know, um, uh, us coming to this topic, uh, it shows our effort for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our sincerity, you know, and that we want to know, we want to learn, um, and we want to do what we can, right, with, with whatever, you know, faculties we have, with whatever um, resources we have, we want to do what we can, right? So before I go into my into my, 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 my talk today, I would just like to... Um, uh, just I would just like to lay out right that um the dis not a disclaimer I won't call it a disclaimer right but it's just just to um I guess to give a background I right, to give a background of the methods that I will present today um these methods they are um they're mainly from um Imam Al Ghazali right, Imam Al Ghazali and it, and they're mainly from um some of the other scholars with regards to uh, raising children. Um, they are from a main text on Islamic parenting, right, which is uh Riyadh to Sibian, right, and that is um and 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 so inshallah it is from this this text that I have taken from. And so the methods that you'll be seeing like are tried, tested, and proven methods, right, but they are very traditional. Right. So and and I, I, I use the word traditional a lot, so I and someone told me I have to, you know, um, explain traditional because you know people might not understand what traditional means means right? traditional meaning that it has been passed down right from all the way from the prophet sallallahu wasallam's method uh, down to the companions to those that come after and so on right so it is you say it is it is you know it, um it's it's really you say from for for hundreds of years right? hundreds of years this method has been used right in the modern times unfortunately um, people have moved away right, from these methods and they have adopted modern methods which are not as effective as these methods. Right? So I'm, I'm putting this background first. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting this background first um, just so that people understand where I'm coming from because I think, um, because when I first learned it as well, you know, a lot of things you know, might seem um, not, not in line with what, we have been told for a long time and because you know a lot of our education is based on the modern method of education whereas the islamic method of education is very different right so it's actually very very different you know and i was exposed to this when i was studying in tarim in the Zahra in tarim i was exposed to this very you know traditional way of of um, education in islam which was very different Right, from the modern um you said you know the modern concepts of education and 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 tarbiyah, which is nurturing of children right so I'm just putting this this out <laughs> this this um this background out right so that you you can understand where it's coming from right and because I'm just preparing myself embracing myself for um people uh, I hope you accept it you know I'm, I'm really glad that you accept it because I've seen the products you know I've seen the people who have gone through this method and they the products of it you know mashallah and of course and of course um with the Q&A inshallah we open up with the Q&A um I, I'm I am expecting people um to ask questions like you know so we see something that is so pure you know something what that I'm presenting to you is something that is so pure that is so like you say so real you know in a sense that it's so you know it's so that you say ideal you know that's the word and it's so ideal right and that is how it is in Islam right we would always uh we would always present what is ideal um and then we aim for it right we aim for it um and so if we fall short right we are falling short of an ideal right right so if you if you present something that is lesser than ideal and if you fall short you know then you you get you get worse you know in in a sense if you if you understand that right so in a sense that you, you so you so you're shown something perfect right and you aim for the perfection of course knowing that you won't reach the perfection but at least it gives you a high aim and that is basically the entire concept of prophets. Right? Prophets are sent to us as example as examples for us, and they are perfect human beings. So we know that we follow the prophets, um, knowing we will never be like them. Right? But they're there for us to aim at, right? for us to 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 strive to be like, knowing that we'll never be like them exactly. It's not possible, right? But it is just to see that you're given a perfect, a perfect, you know. Um, example, and you just strive your very best and get as high as you can, you know, in following. 
um, the Prophet wasallam parenting, um, Islamic parenting comes directly from our Prophet wasallam as there are many, many narrations um, uh, from the Prophet uh, directing us or guiding us with regards to our children. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Quran, you know, of the meaning that for surely you find in the Prophet wasallam the perfect example. Right, Ustad and Hasana, and you find inside of him the perfect example for those who want Allah and the hereafter. Right, so and 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 our teachers would say, and and especially and they have courses on on parenting. When I was in Tarim, they have actually complete courses because it has been part of the Islamic tradition for hundreds of years that parenting is taught. It is not assumed, it is taught from a very young age. They will teach the girls and the boys on parenting in their teenage years. They will actually train them when that young age, mashallah. You know, um, and, and so as our Prophet وسلم, is the perfect example uh, in everything, in every aspect of life, right? And especially as being a parent, right? being a parent, being a father, you know, um, and also teaching about motherhood, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right? He, you know, <laughs> everything, right? So we always look at, to him, you know, for, um, uh, we always look to him, right, for guidance, right? And we don't actually, um, we can take from modern day parenting sources if you want to, right? But I would always, you know, place it next, you know, to the prophetic standard, right? So, so, like first and foremost, learn your prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, because his method is without doubt, right? Correct, it's correct without doubt, right? Um, when you read parenting books, right, it is human opinion, right? Other people's, you know, and is there research and so on? You can say is there research, right? But it is human opinion nonetheless, and it's not completely correct, unlike what you can say about the prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay, mashallah. All right, alhamdulillah, um, that's the introduction, right? So I'm going to go into the um, the topic for today, right? So Islamic parenting, right? and we're zooming right in um, into, as we mentioned, two very specific and important topics on teaching the prayer and the Quran, right? two separate things. And I'm going to address both of them um, separately, inshallah. I do have a longer series right, on my podcast on Islamic parenting as a whole, Right, so from from age before zero, right, all the way till puberty, right. Uh, it was the the course was conducted, I think, in twenty seventeen. <laughs> it was conducted twenty seventeen. So my, some of my students said it's high time to do a refresher, to do to do, redo the course. <laughs> so, inshallah, this time <laughs> we will do a, re a refresher on the entire course, right? But it's like, I think it's like a um, I think it's like a four month course right, that we did, uh, in twenty seventeen. No, inshallah. Okay, Bismillah. Let us first begin right, by taking some blessings um, from the Quran, the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and from the words of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with the intention that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens up our hearts, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens up our minds, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, gives us of our intentions, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, shows us the light of guidance with regards to this matter that is so, you know, uncertain and unclear. All of this, we put in our intentions right now, right? Before I, I, I read this verse, I want all of you to put in your intentions as to why you are here for this course, right? Why have you come for this course? What are your intentions? Uh, of course, you know, first and foremost in your intentions, is that you are seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, secondly, in your intentions, you want that your that your, your family, yourself, your children, right, um, uh, all of those whom you love, right, to be counted as the ummah, right, as the, as the, as the um, nation of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to receive his shafa'ah, right, to receive his great intercession on the day of judgment. Right, you can put place in your intention right, that you want to raise um, human beings that will be the coolness of your eyes and the coolness of the eyes of the Prophet but he will take pride in these human beings and how they have how they will conduct themselves on this earth you want to raise human beings who will be sufficed right, with their connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their connection to the Quran it, it will suffice them in as, as they go, get through life it is enough for them they have their salat they have their, their prayer and they have their Quran you're going to make this intention as well Ya Allah Right, to, for uh, for yourself first and foremost, and then the human beings who are around you, the, the little human beings right, that they have in place, you know, in your care, 
and in, and in your trust, in your amana, in your responsibility, they have been placed in your hands. Right? So you make this intention as well that you want that these human beings be suffice with the Quran and be suffice with their prayer as how their Prophet وسلم, was sufficed right, with the Quran and the, and the Salat not needing anybody else ever and not depending on any other or, or not, not, not depending on any of the creation it was enough for him and it used to be said that Rasulullah whenever he was distressed right, whenever he was in, in, you know, in pain whenever he was in any trouble you know, whenever he felt, felt troubled right, he felt troubled Right, he would rush to the prayer and he would go into sujood and he would get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we intend to train ourselves and our children on such a habit, you know, of, of always seeking solace right, in the prayer and, 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 that, and that the prayer be the coolness of, the, of their eye and that they rejoice when they get to pray and they look forward to getting, they look forward to, to praying, you know, and we also, um, uh, we also intend that they rejoice when they have to read the, when, when, when they read the Quran and they, they be of those people who cannot stop reading the Quran. Whenever they read the Quran, they, they, they taste the sweetness of the Quran and they want to read more and more and more and more and more. And whenever they stop reading the Quran, they, they're just thinking, when can they come back to the Quran to recite the Quran? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make them of all of this and all of this uh, righteous intentions that our teachers have made whenever they speak about parenting and they speak about prayer and Quran. And all of this, and all of your righteous intentions, all of this, Ya Allah, accept this from us by the secrets held in Surah Al Fatiha. Al Fatiha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. يا أيها الذين آمنوا قو وأنفسكم وأهليكم نار وأنفسكم وأهليكم نار نار وقودها الناس والحجارة الله سبحانه وتعالى says in the Quran O you who believe protect yourselves and your family from the fire the fuel of which is man and stone. This is Surah Taharim, verse 6. So from this verse, um, it opens up our topic. Right? And this is why we're here. Right? From this verse of the, of the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where he has told us, protect yourselves and protect your family from the fire. Right? And the one thing right, that is the strongest protection uh, for a human being is his connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the strongest connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is the salat right? the salat is close to the word silah right? silah means um, connection right? and salah right, is close to that word um, uh, because it is your connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the fire, the fuel of which is men and stones and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith that towards the end of time there will be tribulations, no fitna right? fitna, tribulations or trials you know, darkness upon darkness you know, darkness upon darkness and you know, whereby a person comes to the morning as a believer and then he he comes. He wakes up in the morning as a believer, and he comes to the evening as a disbeliever. Or he comes to the evening as a disbeliever, and he wakes up in the morning as a. He comes to the evening as a believer, and he wakes up in the morning as a disbeliever, selling his religion for some gain of this dunya. And and Sayyidina Ali asked Rasulullah Sallam, Ya Rasulullah, mal makhraj Ya Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, what's the way out, Ya Rasulullah, when this has happened around us? Which is why this topic we're going to emphasize so strongly. You know, I really hope that parents are listening. Um, uh, to this about about prayer and about and about Quran, um, and Sayyidina Ali said, "Ya Rasulullah, man ma, uh, man Ya Rasulullah, right, what is what is the way out? Ya, what is the exit? What is the way out? Ya Rasulullah." And he said, "Sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Kitabullah." Right, he said, "The book of Allah, the book of Allah, the book of of Allah, the Quran. Hold on to the Quran, you know, firmly and strongly. Do not let go of the Quran." You know, subhanallah, and we are in a, we, are, we are in a zaman, we are in an era whereby the prayer has been abandoned and the Quran has been abandoned by majority of the Muslims of our time. By majority, it's not minority; it's majority. Like very few Muslims have a portion of Quran every single day, and very few Muslims um spend time, you know, on their prayer. Most Muslims, even if they do pray. There is a rush to the prayer. If they do read the Quran, it is minimal, like minimal Quran. Subhanahu wa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring us back like, to what our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left us on. 
from the prophet so, so you know, um uh, blessings from the wisdom from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam an ali radiyallahu ta'ala anhu an nabi sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam qal adibu auladakum ala thalath khisal hubb nabiyyikum wa hubb ahli baytihi wa qira'at alquran fa inna hamalat alquran fi zill allah yawm al la zill illa zilluh ma anbiya'ihi wa asfiya'ihi akhrajahu dailami i on the authority of sayna ali radiyallahu ta'ala anhu i who said that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said discipline mashallah the, the word the word is so you know so precise i do is adibu i adibu meaning give them adab i give them etiquette give them manners i give them mashallah mashallah you know uh, it's not allimu it's not teach it's adibu right which means adab i use adab you know uh uh uh, uh use adab on your um can people not draw my slides <laughs> right use adab on uh, on your on your uh, teach your children adab right teach your children discipline so teach, teach your children uh, manners you know etiquette so i use the word discipline right because it's a verb that has to mean you know like etiquette i right? give them etiquette give them manners um so discipline your children on three traits and the word discipline here is basically having good manners having good character so how do you discipline your children you know on you know uh, how do you discipline your children you know on three things right he says here um the uh, prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says here the first one is love of your prophet second one is love of his family and the last one is recitation of the quran for indeed the bearer of the quran the one who carries the quran in his heart and on his limbs will be in the shade of allah on a day where there is no shade except for his shade with the prophets and the elect no mashallah mashallah right and there's so much to be said about this hadith but i chose this hadith because of this part about the quran right just to just to impress upon everyone you know um the the really the heaviness of this topic we are coming to this is not a light topic at all right this is basically your child's akhirah Uh, your child's here here after you know is basically your child's here after prayer and quran not you know nothing is more important and then these two things and it's your here after is also your here after you know subhanallah so um uh, just 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 a brief commentary right, on the hadith this hadith you can you can give a very long commentary you know on this um statement of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know from the first word it's like that there be pages of commentary on the word adibu you know to discipline your children you know on three traits but i'm just going to you know um um suffice you know with a few statements about this hadith um first and foremost the love of the prophet opens up the prayer the love of the prophet opens up the quran right because he is the best of those who pray you know and he is the best of those who recite the quran right and when you love someone so much that right, you want to do as they have done you will learn about their life and how they have lived it right so love of the prophet you can never underestimate love of the prophet and teaching love is only by one way right you know teaching love is by telling stories that's how you teach love you tell stories about the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and from there you instill the love of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam of course you the salawat on the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and of course the sunnah of rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam all of these things they contribute right to instilling love for the prophet this is something that is essential 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 in the upbringing of your children I am of of the prayer of the Quran and also of their akhlaq and of of their this of their etiquette and their and their um and their adab you know and and their mannerisms I all goes back to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam love of his family this is something that you know people might they might think his family you know but how do I teach love of the family right and I will say one thing to you especially for our girls right, in our time especially for our girls connect their heart to the daughter of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sayyida fatima az-zahra connect their heart to the wives of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sayyida khadija sayyida 
Aisha, uh, Sayyida Um Salama, Sayyida Hafsa, right, and, and all of his wives connect their hearts to the women around the Prophet. If you, if you have girls, right, it is their right. It is their right that you acquaint them right, with the um, with the woman around the Prophet wasallam, and you yourself be acquainted with the woman around the Prophet wasallam, right, because these that is how you that is how you instill the very beautiful um uh, uh, devotion that this woman had. Right, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in prayer and in Quran. You know, mashallah. So never underestimate any of this. Each and each statement is a lesson. You know, I won't even say a lesson, it's a course. <laughs> right, each statement of this hadith is a course in and of itself. <laughs> you know, mashallah. Right, we only have two hours, so I can't I can't like go so much into it. Right, but I really hope that you know, just just in mentioning this, that you go further and you go and you know um explore this and look for and ask Allah to show you where to, where do you learn this stuff. Right, where, where where can I where can I expand on this stuff? Where can I you know um uh, develop you know myself you know on this information? Because how can I how can I you know guide my children if I myself don't know? You know in Arabic they will say faqiru shay la yati. Right, the one who does not have something can't give it. You gotta have it first, then you can give it, and that will bring us on the our next slide. You know of the of the principles of nurturing your children, and there are four principles as our scholars have mentioned. And the last thing that he mentioned here, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, discipline them on the recitation of the Quran. There has to be a discipline, you know, on Quranic recitation. So, not just you know, um, uh, uh finish the Quran once in their life and they khatam and that's it and they close the Quran. No, never, ever, ever. <laughs> you know, Subhanallah, the Quran is to be continuously read over and over again and pondered, uh, pondered over, you know, and learned and studied. And that is what the Quran is for. It's 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 been sent for us. It's a guidance for us, right? So on the recitation of the Quran, and then and then he went. He goes on, um, to to show the greatness of those who hold on to the Quran, and where will they be on the day of judgment? And in fact, you can use the words of the Prophet. You should be using the words of the Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, to encourage yourself and your children. These are the kinds of words that I will say to parents: write it out, put it up on the wall. Put it big, large on the wall. Write it out and put it on the wall so your children look at it. Right? So the one who has memorized the Quran, you will be under the shade of Allah on a day where there is no shade. The sun is a hand span above your head. Right? And but but the one who 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 has carried the Quran, memorized the Quran, you know, acts by the Quran, loves the Quran, these will be special people under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Together with who? Together with the prophets and the elect. You know, mashallah. And this is how you encourage them. It's one of the principles that I'm going to speak about later also, inshallah, right, of the principles of tarbiyah, the principles of, of nurturing, that you got to know all this that you say, um, I don't know what to call them, right, but you you got to know all this, um, uh, like like incentives, you know, incent statements that are incentives. You know, so you don't have you don't always have to just give, you know, them something physical as a gift. You know, like, oh, if you read the Quran every day, I'm gonna give you, you know, a sweet or a present or whatsoever. Which you can if you want to, but I will not um uh promote it in a sense whereby then there's no end. Then then you have to keep, you know, like like bring up your game <laughs> and giving them more and more and more and you come to a point but you can't. Right? So from a very young age, you know, make them desire what is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So you just say, you know. You know, those people who read the Quran a lot, right? Those who love the Quran, right? You know, on the day of judgment, you know, you know, the, 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 on that day, right? Everybody's scared. You know, everybody's terrified because all of what of what people do, you know, Allah will show, right? But the people and, and on that day it's gonna be so hot. And you can tell them in this information, you know, and some and some people, right, they will sweat. They will sweat so much, all from hadith. Right? They will sweat so much that the sweat will reach their ankles. Then some people, the sweat will reach their knees. And some people, the sweat will reach their, their, their waist. And some people, the sweat will reach their, their throat. And some people will be drowning in their sweat because they're so scared on the day of judgment. But some people are not scared. You know, some people will be relaxing on that day. Some people will be in like a VIP lounge under Allah's throne. <laughs> you know, some people, you, you can say this to them, you know, to, to excite them, you know, to show them. And, and you have to have the, the, the passion in your eyes that you also want that. 
you know and so and you know who are these people right you know these are, these are the people who love the quran and they read the quran you know a lot in abundance you know they read so much the quran every day they wake up in the morning the first thing they think quran 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 they take wudu they pray their subuh and quran straight away quran you know and then before they sleep they take their wudu they pray isha and quran 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 you know and every single time they want their quran you know mashallah right, so and, and these are the people that allah loves right the people of the quran are the people of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is how that is how you know you you you, you speak to them like you have to love it <laughs> like you have to you can't you can't give what you don't have so you have to love it so this brings me to the four principles of effective nurturing right there are four principles right four main principles that our scholars have mentioned um and these principles are divided into two right, into two groups right um the first into the two sections of one into two sections right the first section is all about you right the teacher because when you speak about nurturing and right, you speak about education there are two people involved right basically the teacher and the student right so when you speak about method you got to go to the teacher and you have to actually you know work on the teacher and then you go to the student and then you work on the student right so even if you have an awesome teacher right if you're not if you're not you know linking up with the with the student you know and ensuring the student is doing as the teacher has guided it's not going to work if you have a very very enthusiastic student you know but the, but a the teacher is a lousy teacher of one right? but if a teacher is is a, is a is a completely you know incompetent teacher <laughs> right then that won't work either right it just makes sense you know it just makes sense you know mashallah um right so you got to look at two sides you got to look at the teacher and parents whether you like it or not you are teachers right you don't there is no you have no choice you basically have no choice you signed up for it you got married you had the children you are teachers whether you want to admit it or not whether you want to you know realize it or not you are teachers nonetheless they will learn from you even if you don't want them to <laughs> they will learn from you and we know that so as you do something that in you know, some habit of yours and then the next thing you know your child picked it up la haula wala quwwata illa billah you're like ah oh, when did she see me do this and now she's picking it up you know subhanallah they they they, they watch you and right? they watch you and they follow you exactly right and you can use this to a positive end or it could be a negative you know um effect on your child that they're copying you you know and i know i know of parents that by they they like you know i see my child in her rage and i see myself <laughs> you know like that is me that like, my child's my child's anger that's me <laughs> that's why and or my child's tantrum it's exactly me it's just me you know i'm like that you know so and 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 sometimes you, you just mashallah may allah help us you know may allah help us mashallah right so 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 you got to work on yourself and don't think it's too late it's never too late you know allah is all merciful it's never too late inshallah it's never too late right um and in fact at any point someone embarks on a journey of self improvement it's never too late even if it's one minute before they pass away it's never too late right to embark on a journey of self improvement inshallah so the first one right and so now i'm going to speak about the um the teacher first right teacher meaning parent all right so parents and teachers so if any of you here are not parents but you're teachers i it, it it is also um uh useful right for for you to listen in fact essential and right? for me um i myself am i am not a parent i don't have children right but i teach children right? i teach children i i teach children almost every single day right six days six hours or seven days i'm teaching children um and a lot of these methods that i've learned when i was in tarim i studied parenting in tarim um i used it on them and i found them to be very effective um but it is most effective when it's a daily method, when it's a daily affair right? it is most of course of course right? you say of course right you know once a week is is definitely you know nowhere near being effective as every single day and which is why this has to be taken up by the parent because you are the only human being who's with your child every single day and of course even the teacher you know if your child's not well or if your child's going off to some you know some 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 activity or during the school holidays i, I don't see your child 
And I only see them when they come for class and I don't see them, you know, otherwise. You're the only human being who's next to them every single day. You see them when they wake up and you see them when they fall asleep. Right? You're there all the time. You're the best teacher for them. You know, you are the best teacher for them, you know, but but prepare yourself, you know, uh, 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 equip yourself with what you need, right, to teach your children. So as I, as I mentioned, I, for me, a lot of these methods I studied when I was in Tarim, and I I have implemented it since I came back from 2017 till today, right? and I've seen the 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 effects you know of these methods. Um, I have not implemented them fully, right? Because as I mentioned, I am not their parent, right? So I am not their parent, so I only have an hour and a half with them every day, right? So I do what I can, right? But I'm not their parent, so it makes it makes a lot of difference. Being their parent, you're there with them. You know, you, you you live in the same house with them, you know, and you're the best person to hold them by the hand and to nurture them. And I really, 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 really urge all parents that you be the one to bring the religion to your children. And that you, you know, as much as I, I teach religion to, to children and I'm an Ustaza for children, um, that I I personally really strongly feel right, that the, the most effective people um to really influence your child's um relationship with Islam and with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is you are right? the most effective person so sometimes you know people get kids get placed in my hands and I really want to you know um you know like, 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 like I, I wish the parents would take it up I, I wish the parents would take it up which is why I'm doing this course you know so as to, 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 to in a sense um teach parents how do you take it up right you are the best person for this job okay so the first one Right, as we have been, as it's, it's what I was doing from the beginning, right, of this of this talk. If you're wondering how come she's talking about the prophet, and you speak about the future, and you speak about the era, and you speak about the 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 fitna, and you speak about you know all kinds of things, if you've not come into prayer and Quran, <laughs> you know why are you talking about all this other stuff about day of judgment and about people sweating and people people worried and so on. There's so many in so much information that is. Oh, there's so much, you know, um, and you have not come to the step by step that we're looking for. Right? I mean, you might be thinking that, you know, like we're here to see the step by step. How do am I going to teach my child prayer and Quran? That's what I want, right? You can't jump. You you can't skip the important step, right? You can't jump right there. It will not work. It will not work if you if you come right up to your child, and you make them pray. Come pray with me now. Come pray, Zor, Zor. Come pray, Asar. Come. Right, four akas. Right, don't be lazy. Come here. And or uh, Quran, Quran, come off the TV. Off, 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 off. Quran now. Come, come here. Sit down. Get your Quran. Go and go and do your now. Mm. <laughs> which child will love it? <laughs> I don't know which child will love it. Which adult would love it? I don't know <laughs> which child, which, which adult would, would love it. You know, but it always a lot of people they skip the very very important tarbiya step. They skip it, which is understanding, appreciation, right. And remember this first point, it's for you, O oh adult. <laughs> it is number one, number two is for the adult. Number three and number four is for the child. Right? So it's for you, O oh adult. Right? This is you need to understand the greatness of this matter. You need to have it in your blood and in your veins. Right? You need to be on a continuous um pursuit of knowledge. You have to. Right? And 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 I'm not, you know, subhanAllah. Never say you're too busy. Right? Never say you are too busy to study your religion. Never say. And never stop studying your religion. Right? Till you die, you need to continuously study your religion. Till you die. Understand that. Right? And it's, so it, I, cannot, I cannot emphasize this enough. It is only when people, adults, right, stop studying their religion that is when um, they will succumb to the temptations of this world. And when they succumb to that, they forget Allah. And when they forget Allah, their children don't remember Allah because they're copying their parents, right? So understand the importance. I'm going to go, I have some points right, about this. In a, in a while, I'll, I'll go through them. Uh, I'll come back there, right, inshallah. Right? I'm just going to lay out all four first. Number two, you must be showing it first. Before you teach anybody, you have to implement it yourself first. Right? You have to be praying on time. You have to be praying early. 
you have to be having a Quran, you know, Quran sessions every single day with your Quran. Uh, you have to have a Quran hour for yourself like in the morning, in the evening. You, whatever you want for your kids to learn from you, you have to have it. You. And there's no way around this. There is really, literally, there is no way around this. You can keep, you know, saying, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send them to this ustaza or that ustaza or whatsoever. Possible they might be influenced by the ustaza, right? But the strongest, strongest, strongest influence is you. You know, and I know of households, right, whereby, you know, mashallah, that every single one of, of, the, of the children in that household, they grow up so, they grow up so well, you know, mashallah, with the akhlaq, with the etiquette and the Quran and the prayer. And when you look at the parents, you see the parents implementing it. Right, so first I'm talking about you first. I'm not going to speak about your husband. Right, if I ring, man, my husband, of course he's actually, you know, he is just as important, you know, as 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 a leader of the family. Right, but we'll leave that aside first for for the time being. So that's the number two. That's you. All right, and then number three. Now we we are speaking to the, we are speaking to the uh, children. Right, so you see how how this is connected, right? So this is you. Right, and here's your child. Right, so after you have understood the importance of what you have to, you know, uh, the importance of what of what you have to, uh, uh, of, of of Quran and in prayer and whatever of importance that you that you want to to relate to them, then you relate to them, right? And you must know how to relate to them. Like, how do I tell the children? You know, how do I speak to them? Like, how do I, you know, share with them what I've learned? You know, mashallah, and it's something that children really appreciate you know when i like for me you know i teach children i have no children myself but i teach children and i do teach my own um nephews and nieces and i realize that you know the more you know like they they want to hear from me you know and and and, and they want to hear from me my own personal experiences they love it they love it mashallah they love it <laughs> right they, they love it today i was just teaching at masjid khalid earlier today i teach primary one and primary two you know at masjid um um and and all four subjects, you know, aqida and fiqh, you know, and uh and and sira, the life of Rasulullah Islam, and akhlaq, right? All three subjects I teach them, you know, boys and girls, P one and P two. Um, and really, you know, it's really the the relaying is so important to know how to relay the information and the importance, you know. And I'm right now my primary one, you know, I am training them on solat right? because they are seven, you know, and I'm training them, you know, and I'm making them, you know, have place more importance on the prayer. But then again, I only see them once a week, so I it's very limited for me to really, you know, help them on this. And I and I I always try to work with the parents and get the parents, but the parents themselves must have it you know and you must know that it is important and you must keep checking on your children because if you don't do so nobody else will do it you know except you and the last one number four right emphasis and cons consistency right because right because you're showing it because first and foremost you have to have istiqama basically right you have to show it and you have to ensure that they are also implementing it. Right? So, so if you have a habit in your daily routine that you are doing your prayers in your Quran in, in a particular way, right, then you will not forget to emphasize it on them and to be consistent about it on them because you have something in place right, for yourself. When you don't have a proper scheduling for yourself, then you know, high chances you're not going to follow up on your children. Right, because you could, you don't even follow up on yourself, you know. Subhanallah, and they're gonna watch you, right? So when when you when, when so when so you have to first, you know, and then you have to emphasize. Um, I think I spelled it wrong. This emphasize and um uh also emphasis up on emphasis, correct, and consistency because prayer and Quran, unfortunately, the nafs doesn't like it. <laughs> the nafs is it is natural. This is what you're facing, and when you, when you when you have your children and you call them for the prayer and for the Quran, it could be sometimes you you really do everything you can in, in telling stories and so on. You do everything you can to nurture them, and you find them still dragging their feet on it. They're grumbling, they're whining, they're this, they're that, you know. And 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 the the re the reason is because the nafs doesn't like it. <laughs> It's just it's just as simple as that. The lower self does not like it. 
they don't the lower self does not like to get up and perform wudu and perform the prayer and break and, and interrupt their play the lower self does not want to sit there and read you know the quran when they and then they can't watch you know their, their videos so lower, they don't they don't like it even adults drag their feet on it you know subhanallah and i'm going to ex, uh, explain and expand more on this right so there are four basically four principles as our teachers have our the scholars have laid out for us four principles of effective nurturing and they are kind of intuitive you know they are in, I would say they, they are intuitive I hope they are intuitive right so number number one I'm, for the first two I'm just going to um, give some points I'm not going to spend so much time on it because I know that people came for three and four right um, on really how do I speak to my children and how do I keep them on it how do I start I do have a step by step from um, age from as young as possible I right, all the way up to puberty Right, so if you're looking for that, it's coming. Right? So if you're wondering why so much talk and no step by step, step by step, it's coming, it's coming. But just to to emphasize again that all this talk is very important, and I hope you're and hope I hope you're seeing it. You know, it is it is very important. Mm. So the first thing out is just advice to parents <laughs> or parents: continue to go for classes on prayers and Quran. Right, so continue studying your fiqh continue studying um, the meanings in the prayers, continue studying how do I focus on my prayers, continue studying the meanings in the Quran. If you're already fluent in Quran reading, then study tafsir. If you're not fluent, then of course, you know, continue with your Quran citation, you know, um, um, study tajweed properly. You, this is for parents. Parents, don't you stop this. Right? Don't you... And and this is why I, I, this is why from the very beginning of this of this talk, you know, I mentioned that these are methods that have been used for hundreds of years, right? And but for them, you know, for 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 these Muslims of the of the past, they never stop. They never stop studying. They never stop going for classes. One thing that I've 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 come to realize in our time is that many people actually stop, right? and in fact, unfortunately, many people stop once they've finished. Um, their so-called weekend madrasa when they are teenagers. You know, some of them stop at sec 2 or sec 3 right, because they want to focus on their O-levels. Then after their O-levels, they never get it, then they never get back to it ever again. And they kind of like stopped their Islamic studies right there. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about formal Islamic studies. Right? So don't stop. Look for in Singapore, there's so many classes, you know, mashallah, so many. Um, we don't we don't let classes at all. And right now, the COVID has caused for so many classes to go online. So you don't even have, you know, if you can't find a timing in Singapore that suits your your work timing, the whole world is now open. You know, subhanAllah, you can find a you can find a class somehow, somewhere, you know, mashallah. You know, it's just a matter of you prioritizing, right? Prioritize that this is for your own soul and the souls of your children, right? So you, you need to continue doing this because as you mentioned, the one who does not have something can't give it. I'm going to speak about stories later on with regards to prayer and Quran. And, and, in, and the first question that I, I would expect to be asked is, where do we get these stories? Right? Where do we get these stories? Answer, classes. <laughs> classes. You know, you hear, you hear stories from, from teachers. They tell you stories all the time. You know, mashallah. You know, um, I I particularly these past few days I've been enjoying Suza Khadija Badik Zaman's um classes. It's in Malay. You know, I I happen to sit in, and and I really enjoy her classes because she she really always tells many many nice stories. <laughs> you know, mashallah. So like I will sit there next to her and she will be like, you know, so I'll, I'll sit there and I'll just because I like her stories. You know, and and a lot of her stories I've never heard of it before. Right. So so and I will write it down and just to keep in mind I can tell my kids. You know, in in when when they come for class, I can tell them the stories, and it matters. And I and I've seen this happen over and over again. Whenever I tell stories about Quran, I tell stories about prayer. It affects them, you know, from my kindergartners to my teenagers. Uh, it affects every single you know um every single age group, and of course adults. <laughs> it affects adults as well. Stories is the way of the Quran. Uh, but where do I get these stories? classes <laughs> nowhere else classes come on you gotta go for classes and you can have your collection of stories you know mashallah my mom used to used to have classes with us once a week and she would always begin with stories my aunt when she before she puts her kids to sleep you know out to bed my cousins my, my cousins she would say my aunt used to always tell them stories 
and not like like bedtime fairy tale stories. No, they would tell the stories of you know of of the prophets, of the Sahaba, of the of the righteous, the Aulia. They would tell stories that 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 affect a person's belief in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. It affects a person's you know love for the prayer. It affects a person. Uh, it affects a person's you know attachment to the Quran. I she will tell stories to them, right, in this way, and this is the most effective way. But you need to fill up your well, right? Your well of knowledge needs to be filled up before you can start, you know, watering your giving giving water or quenching the thirst of your children. You gotta fill it. You gotta fill yourself up. You can't come as a dry well. Right? You gotta come as a filled up, you know, nourished well of stories. Mashallah. So. You need to be on an inc- on a continual increase in your certainty in the importance of this, and again, this only happens through classes. You know, sometimes you know you hear something in a class and you're so motivated. Give yourself a few days, stop listening to, listening to any class, and you will find that it will diminish, it will die away, it will fade, it will fade off. This is how the human being is. If you, if the human being does not receive continuous reminder, he forgets. That's how the human being is, right? So, so maybe right now after this class, you're like, oh, I'm so motivated, I'm so motivated. You know, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, you know, and, and, and so on, right? Then after a few days, if you did not follow up, the motivation wanes, right? It goes away, fades away, right? And then you're like, oh, it's too hard, right? And then, and then you try and like, find some easier way. What, again, what we're presenting here, right? It is the, um, the best way. I, I'm saying this with full certainty because it is from our Prophet. All of what I, I'm presenting here, all of it have um they have proof right, from the words of the Prophet or from his um actions. Right? All of this have proof right, from the Prophet. But I'm just presenting to you the points, you know, mashallah. Um just, just to give a summary, you know, of, of this all. All right. So of course, you know, just an emphasis here, your journey, right, has not ended for you at all. Right. So if you think this is about your children, it's half about you, half about them. Right. Because because you, you know, uh, you are the center of their lives right now. You know, especially if you have if you have preschoolers or primary schoolers, you are literally you are literally the center of their life, right? Everything. They come from school, they look for you. When you come home from work, right, they run to you. They, they they just want you. They just want you. Your their, their parent. They want, especially their mother. They want their mother, right? So you, you're half of their tarbiyah, right? They, they, they're nurturing. You are half of it. In fact, I would say you're you're all of it, right? So you gotta fix yourself. You gotta fix yourself. You know, you gotta you gotta continue your journey. If you stopped your journey somehow, you know, or other, and you stopped, you know, studying formally, right? Get back on the bandwagon. Get get back on. You know, get get back on, and study. I open up the book, study. I go for classes, study. Right, and we really have no excuse because everything is is recorded. Everything's on YouTube. It's on podcasts. You could be going to work, coming from work, and you could be going through a class. You know, so so ensure that you continuously study. All right. Um. Okay. So so uh, so number two. So number one, number two. I'm just gonna put it here because it's just a few points for 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 you. But of course, you see the kalam. The the the, the discussion is is lengthy. Right, but because of time, I'm not I'm not gonna go into such lengthy discussions. Eh? Um, but you can go into it. Um, almost all of my classes, I actually emphasize a lot on number one and number two because it it, it really matters. It really matters. You should have a schedule for your own self in Quran recitation if you don't have it yet, right? So if you have no and this schedule, the schedule, have it in front of your children. Right, have this schedule in front of it. In a sense, read the Quran in their presence. I know, you know, sometimes, sometimes mothers, you know, like you, you don't want to be disturbed, so you read it when they're not around, right? Or you read it when you when they are sleeping, right? So, as, but as, as they grow older, as they grow older, it matters to them, right? To see you read, right? So maybe you can put some of your recitation when they're not around if you want to focus on it, right? but have some in front of them. As how as if your prayer have some in front of them, as if your dhikr have some in front of them, you know. So all of your acts of worship, right? You know, your children are the are the very people for you to somewhat show off to. It's not a showing off, but it is a tarbiyah. Right? You are trying to nurture them, right? So by being an influence in their life, right? how are you going to be an influence if you're not doing it? 
right, in front of them. Right? How are you gonna How are you gonna influence them, right? So in your Quran recitation, if if you tend to recite Quran early in the morning before they wake up, or at night when they've gone to sleep, then put some timing whereby they are around you, you know, and then um incorporate this into their schedule. Right, to show them it is the most important thing. You know, one thing that I already recommend for parents to do if your child is in primary school, you know, and they're having homework or revision, right? I would recommend that before they do their homework or their revision to to have Quran time. Right. To to and to emphasize to them, you know, because it's the one is part under number three, right? Uh to emphasize to them that the Quran opens up your mind. Right, the Quran opens up your mind. The Quran allows for you to absorb information and understand things, understanding, understand things, um, well and 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 deeply. You know, Subhanallah. So when you do this before we study, what do we always do? Quran. No matter how much work you have to do, before we study, what do we always do? Quran. Right. So before we do homework, what do we always do? Quran. Before we go to school, what do we always do? Quran. Right? So even if it's a, a small amount, a, a very short you know, amount of Quran to be read, read it. Wherever they are, if they're doing some ikra, if they're doing, if they're doing tilawati, you know, whatever they're doing, wherever they're at, read something. Right? Read something to show that this is how we approach knowledge. We always approach knowledge through the door of the Quran. No, inshallah. So, so have for your own self, you know, schedule for your own self. I right, so um, my mom she used to teach us uh, every every night, you know, math, science, English, and stuff like that. Right. So, it, um, uh, so so you know, when we do Quran together first, right, and then we do our subjects, right, uh, and we and we and we study, right. That that shows us that the most important knowledge or the most important subject in your life is your Quran. And that is the most important thing for you to perfect above all other subjects, no, inshallah. Um, prayer. You should be prioritizing prayer early and abundantly as far as you can. I know many of you here are working adults. No, I, I know I know many of you here are working adults. Right? So with the prayers that you, can, that you can do early. So that for example, Fajr. If you can do Fajr early, right, do it early and get your seven-year-old and above up to be praying with you in congregation, in jama'ah. I get them up. And really, I realized that it is it is the parent who has to do this. The parent has to do this. Right? Because even as as an auntie, you know, or my mom as a, as, as a grandmother, right, it's hard for us to enforce this, you know, on the children around us. Like, I can't enforce this on my nieces and my nephew. I will call them. And I pray, I pray for my mom, you know, um, in jama'ah, in the hall. I myself, my husband, my mom, we pray Fajr in the hall together, right? Uh, in Jama'ah. Right? And we will call, you know, the, the kids who are already awake at that time. We'll call them to come and pray with us. Sometimes they come, sometimes they don't come. You know, we try and emphasize on those who are older um to, to, to come, right? But then again, the only the parent can do it. Only the parent can do it. Right? It's it's hard for the auntie and for the grandmother to do it. Right? Because the children Children, they know, right? They know you're not you're not the parent. <laughs> you're the you're the auntie. <laughs> you know it's different. You know, Ustaza, I can I can kind of force them on it. Right? I can, I, but I will call them. You know, I will call them, and I always try my best to arrange my classes with my with my older children, especially, uh, my students. You know, in a way whereby I would pray a prayer with them, right? So as as a teacher, as a teacher, right? So the older students do pray if you know if if I could you know arrange for them. To pray Zohor with me or Asar with me, I I would I would do so. I right? just to just to get that um, uh, the influence I right? to be passed down to them, All right? So prioritizing prayer early as far as you can. If you can't, then um at least pray together, right? And and to 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 to, to impact them, and to pray abundantly. So even if they're not praying with you, they're watching you pray. And let them see you pray and let them see you connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. And you must show your love for prayer and the Quran. Right. So so like like I've 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 heard parents, you know, sometimes when they say, you know, like when 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 they want to pray, right, they say things like, hey, get the prayer out of the way, then you can go off. Like the kind of statements, which is very bad adapt. It's very bad etiquette. People might not might not think so much about it, but when you say, get the prayer out of the way, like since there was a prayer in the way, why is your prayer in your way? 
you know, it's, it's people don't think so much about it. It's kind of statements. Right, but Siki, let us um, prioritize the prayer first. I'm right, gonna, gonna pray first. The most important thing to us to do is the most important thing for us to do first. Right, then we'll go on on our day. Right, so always pray first. I right? pray praying is always the you know important for you to do. You know, today I was speaking to my primary ones, and I, I've been I've been checking their prayer. <laughs> I've been asking them to check their prayer. Um, but there's only so much I can do again. I only see them once a week. Um, and 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 there was one particular boy who does not pray at all. Uh, his his other f- classmates, it depends. And I already see it really, it's really the parent, you know, Marshall. Some of the my seven year olds in, in, in the masjid, they pray five times a day. They're already praying five times a day at seven years old. Right. Some of them at eight years old, they're in primary one by the eight. Um primary one masjid, yeah, by the eight. Um, some of them they only pray Maghrib in the eight. They only pray Maghrib. You know, some of them they only pray uh, Asar. Right? Only one prayer through the week. Um, some two prayers for the week, right? Um, and 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 so when I when, when I do this with them, you know, I point it out. I say, hey, why are you not doing your Isha, in it? Uh, or why are you not doing Zohor? I will ask them. I will ask them what's going on, you know. I will, and 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 they will give me their reasons. You know, oh, why are you not doing? Why are you not doing Subo? And why is Subo? Is this is Subo hard for you? You know, tell me. Right. So so uh, so I, I I asked them about it, and there was one boy who does not pray a single prayer. So when I saw his chart and I was like, why why is it completely empty? Do you forget to, to record? And he said, um, he doesn't pray. He does not pray at all. And he's eight. And this boy is eight. Right? Our of course, you know, some some people might think, but they're still young, there's no sin for them. Our Prophet Sallallahu said to command them on the prayer at seven, right? <laughs> why did he say that, you know, for people to say, Oh, they're still young, let them be. You know, why did he say command them to the prayer at seven? I, if if you're going to respond and say, they're still young, let them be. You know, right? so, so, I, so I said to him and I sat down with him and I said, you know, you don't pray at all? At all? And you're eight? You don't pray at all? And he's just like, yeah, I don't pray at all. My mom, my parents don't, don't, don't make me pray. Um, then, then I said, that, okay, I need you to, to start praying. Okay, you're already eight years old. You're going to start praying. Okay, so for this coming week, right, you're gonna have to put in more effort, okay? Um, you know, and, and really get your prayers. You know, tell your mother I'm gonna you wanna text your parents a bit. I'm gonna I'm gonna follow up with your parents, right? You know, why is your child not praying? You know, I know some of the children, they told me that they are in after school care. You know, so these are all like like our own that's why I said I'm presenting to you something that is very traditional, very it has been used for hundreds of years. And then we're gonna take this and we're gonna to apply it to our context in modern day Singapore, <laughs> right? In modern day Singapore where a lot of parents are working, you know, and our children they are in um um after school care, you know, or student care and they're, and they're in student care till till seven PM sometimes. And this is what they tell me, the kids they're telling me this. Right. So um and of course there's a lot of Things to be discussed about this, um, with regards to parenting, right? But I'm gonna put it aside first for a while, right? But when I when I when I saw one of the boys, um, uh, they constantly don't pray Zohor and Asar every single day. He prays Subo, Maghrib, and Isha. So Zohor and Asar is gone, right? Never there, and he's he's eight as well, right? So I ask him, you know, why why don't you have Zohor and Asar? And he says, oh, because he said student care. And I said, student care uh, until what time? And he said, oh, after school, after school, one o'clock, one thirty, then stay in student care until seven. Right? Then his parents pick him up after their work. Right? So if, and the thing about it is that uh, prayer is a habit. So when it's not inculcated, you know, when you don't inculcate the habit of prayer, it gets lost. It really gets lost. And a lot of people, unfortunately, as they grow older and they go through our school system, and it's really our school system, you know, that, that really pulls that pulls time from them. You know, and I know of I know of people whereby as they, as when they were young, they used to be very regular on their prayer because their parents put them on it. But once they hit, you know, secondary school, they're in poly or J C or whatever, you know, they begin to let go of their prayers one by one until they reach, you know, university or they're in the adulthood and they completely don't pray. They actually completely don't pray. So from from a young training by the parents when they were primary school, because the parents were watching, right? When they grew older, they left it. And this the, the problem with this one is because of, of one and three, right? One and three is the issue. The weak link is here. This is the weak link, right? It could have been just four all the time, so once you let go when they are teenagers, the thing collapses. Right? One and three keeps them on it 
whether or not you're there, one in three. Mm-hmm. And it's just why I'm, I'm talking about all three of, you know, all four, all four, um, uh, what do you call this? All four principles. <laughs> all four principles, mashallah. Okay, mashallah. Allahumma says in Muhammad, I have only uh, 51 minutes, eh? I have a lot more to cover, <laughs> inshallah. Okay, but anyway, so so I said to him, I, so I said to him, you know, so he says that he's in student care. So now, this happened today earlier on before I came for this class, I was speaking to this boy. Um, and so now I have to to think and I have to speak to the parents that, you know, okay, if any of you here, I'm going to speak to, to, to all of you here, right? If any of you here have your kids in student care, and they're gonna be there from one thirty to seven. Do your kid a favor and speak to the teacher, right? Speak to the teacher because this is the most important thing in their life. Got it? N- number one, number one, number one. <laughs> right? This is the most important thing in their life that they pray. It and, it's, and it will be the most important thing in their life till they die, right? That they pray. So do them a favor. Speak to their teachers. You know, and say that my child, you know, say, but he's only seven, let him be. No, our Prophet Sassam didn't say that. He didn't say they're only seven, let them be. He never said that. He said, command them to the prayer. So command them to the prayer you will do, <laughs> right? In obedience to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi So speak to the teacher and say that my child needs to pray at this time and this time. Right? Just by the corner of the classroom or wherever they have their, their after school um care, right? Um they just gonna do like a four rakats, you know, by the by the by the side, and then you pack for your child long pants, you know, if it's a boy, and then for the girl, you pack for her 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 prayer garment. I know my mom, she really really did one and three of us so strongly. It was so strong. Number two was very strong on her as well. My grandmother as well. My mom and my grandmother, right? One, two, three, right? So then 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 four just followed very 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 naturally, um, uh, very strongly. And I remember myself. Um, I was primary six. I was primary six. I was I had not reached puberty, right? I was primary six, um, and I went for a science fair. And I remember, I remember this very clearly. I went for a science fair, um, and and some of my students may have heard this story before, right? And and the science fair was in this school that I did not know. Right? It was some school. I, I, till now I can't remember the name of the school. <laughs> it was some school that I that was completely unfamiliar with. And I didn't know anybody in that school. Right? And none of my Muslim friends prayed. Right? None of them prayed. My mother had done one, two, one and three so strongly in me, right, that that I I knew I cannot miss the prayer. She has she doesn't know that I'm gonna be, you know, um coming home late also, you know, subhanAllah. I, I sometimes wonder what she did with us, you know. <laughs> right, but but she put it in so strongly into us that, that we don't leave our prayers. We just don't. You know, so I remember I was in the I was I was in the science fair, I was in secular, secular school, you know, I was in the science fair. So in my head, I was thinking to myself that tomorrow I need to pray Zohor. Right, the science fair is at the school after school. Right, so after my school, I follow my school to go to the science fair. Then it will finish around five, right, or five th- thereabouts. Right, and they will send us home. So I was thinking to myself, I was just thinking to myself that, then where am I going to pray Zohor? As a primary six girl, you know, I was thinking to myself, where am I going to pray Zohor? So I took my own telekong, right, I put it in my bag. I remember myself doing this. I put my telekong in my bag, right. I took a sajada, right, and. Um, I took a compass. They didn't know how to read a compass, but I took a compass anyway. Uh, <laughs> Premier, I don't know what I was doing. All right, so so I went for the science fair. You know, we presented our 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 project. Then during lunchtime, right, none of my friends prayed. Right, so I I wa- I I remember myself wandering around the school, thinking, where in the world am I going to pray? I was looking for at least like a pachi cleaner or something, you know, like, like, like a Muslim somewhere. <laughs> but it was a Chinese school. And there was, I couldn't recognize a Muslim. I could not recognize a Muslim in the entire setting. Right? So I couldn't find a single Muslim around me. I didn't know who to ask. Right? So I just went to the f- school field because so I didn't know where to go. Right? So I, went to the, I went to the school field um, at one corner of the field I kind of figured out the the kiblet, so, but now I already caught that break because I think the kiblet was completely wrong. Right? But I kind of figured out the kiblet, <laughs> and I put out my prayer prayer mat and I prayed zohor, right, four rakats, and I came back, right, as a as a primary six girl. I remember doing that. So I'm wondering, like, how did my mom? And my mom didn't say anything to me about this. I wonder if she even knew that I did this, right? So so, but I knew that she had implemented in me something, you know, and that was one in three. That was one in three. That no matter what, you don't you dare miss your prayer. 
no matter what. It's, a, it's, a, it's an inward mechanism that's come into you that you would never miss your prayers. It's a funny story. I'm, I will share the story in one and then I will, I will continue my class. <laughs> right, but it's a funny story. I remember very clearly when I was in um, Tiki JS, the Jordan Girls. Uh, and I told the story in some of my classes. I was tech two, you know, and I went on an exchange trip, you know, with my school to Thailand. Right, so um, so what Tiki just does to us, right? But basically, you know, <laughs> um, I was I was on this exchange trip, right, in Thailand, um, and on our very last night, I don't, I'm not sure why, and I'm thinking, I'm wondering what is the school thinking, right? But I remember very clearly on the very night last night on this, you know, exchange trip, you know, to Thailand, um, I think because they wanted us to get to the airport early, right? So they had all of us, you know, um, stay in this really eerie hostel. It was so eerie. It's so scary. It's, 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 I was sick too that time. It was, it was so eerie. Right? So there were bunk beds, you know, and there was like like empty classrooms and echoey hallways. So you, like, really like, you say, you know, scary story <laughs> from Thailand. Right? So like, 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 you know, and every imagination will come to your head. You know, subhanAllah. So, 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 you know, um, we were in this place. And I, I have this very vivid memory of this place that we were at, you know. And the worst part was where we were all sleeping, you know, in, in the, on, on the bunk beds, right? The toilet was along a very dim, dimly lit corridor that leads, you know, to a, like, a, like a cubicles at the end of the corridor. Like, you're like, this is really like, like, like like Thai ghost story out of the movies or something like that. Right? It was so eerie to the to the to the to the end of being eerie, subhanAllah. So so I had one concern in my head when I was there. How am I gonna pray Subo? You know, because traveler, okay, you know you can you can jam up, you can combine Zor Asar, you know, Maghrib Isha. And I was I was like two at the time and I was thinking, am I gonna go to the to the bathroom at like what, 5 a.m. in the morning or 5.30 or 6 a.m. and do my wudu and pray subo. Who's going to go with me? Like, like, I mean, I mean, it's, it's, it's terif- it was terrifying. I was say terrifying. So I remember myself, I was, this was my worry. It was actually my worry. How am I going to pray subo? Because missing subo is not an option. That was something that was strongly instilled in me by my, mo- by my mother. Number one, number two, eh? Number one, number two. Missing Subo was not an option. It was not an option. So I was thinking to myself, what, what, what do I do? If I sleep, my wudu will be nullified. So when I wake up for Fajr, for Subo, I will have to go to the bathroom to take my wudu. And I'm not going to walk down that eerie hallway, <laughs> you know, with the dim, dim, dim lights to a, to, a, you know, to a bathroom of like 10 cubicles by myself. <laughs> not going to do that. I was, I was so scared. Um, so I came to a conclusion as a 14 year old girl I came to a conclusion that I'm not going to nullify my wudu then <laughs> so I had taken wudu for, for Maghrib and Isha right? so I forced myself to not sleep I did not let myself sleep you know I sat straight you know firm on the bed this is a part of the, the, the uh, my, my topic later on about 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 fiqh, right? about knowing the, the laws. I, I I remember as a sec two girl, and my teacher was asking, why not sleeping, why not sleeping? And I was holding a book and I was making myself read the book and I was forcing myself to not sleep until Fajr because I did not want to take wudu again. <laughs> I don't know why it didn't occur to me to, to go and get a bottle of water and just keep it by myself on my, on my bed. Right? That would have been so much easier. Right? But it just didn't occur. Maybe, maybe I, had, I had come in already for the night and no one was going to the bathroom and I was too scared to ask anyone to follow me. You know, in a sense that I didn't know who, to, I wasn't close to anyone, I didn't know who to ask. I was too shy. They kind of, a lot of things, love, a lot of things. But bottom line, I will not miss Fajr. I will not miss Fajr. Full stop. I, I, it's not an option. Right? It's not an option at all. Right, so I remember I, I just sat there, you know, and looked at my watch the entire time, <laughs> waiting for Fajr to come in. And I remember I sat through the night. I literally sat through the night. Uh, subhanAllah, you know, and I'm, I just occupied myself by, by reading stuff and drawing stuff and writing stuff and just, just keeping myself like, like, you know, awake the entire time. And then once Fajr came in, you know, I got up, I put two rakaas and I slept. <laughs> you know, subhanAllah. But it was number one, number three. Number one, number three does this to you. 
because you don't want to spend you know all these years when they're young trying to insult pray in them by doing four only right only for it to co- collapse when they become teenagers and in young adults you don't want that and i know of many people that i'm in university and thereafter that that happened to them their parents brought them up on prayer but it was only on number 4 number 1 and number 3 was not related to them right and no was number 2 shown to them right number 4 was done the entire time it was forcing 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 so the moment no one was watching it was let go right it was it collapsed right in front of them So anyway, um, let me just go into the next slides. Like a few of them. I'm, I know I'm jumping back and forth between prayer and, and Quran, but I have it. I have them in in order. Um, so you need to show it right in front of them, right? And then number four is of course the emphasis and the consistency, right, on it, right. But I tell you number one, number two, it will just bring you. It, it basically it 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 is for life. It will be in them for life. So even when you're not when you're not around anymore, you passed away, you're not you're not there. um they will push themselves on it and they will go ahead and study it and learn it you know subhanallah um my mom instilled in us very strongly the quran right but she was not um but she had left it to my grandmother to teach us the quran and right? my grandmother being gra- grandmother um we uh met to advantage of her which is you no know, allah have, have mercy on her soul and bless her and we took advantage of her you know so we kind of is in 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 our language we say manja right we kind of like we would we were just very spoiled and didn't recite correctly or properly at all like at all i right? so we just mumble our way through and like done done finish finish go we you know the one quran the one the one ngaji the one to read the one to you know and and, and grandmother being grandmother <laughs> she let us go <laughs> you know mashallah right but i know my mom that like, she would really emphasize this part number 3 1 and 3 Right. So to the point when I was in secondary school, I picked it up again, um, out of desire. It was desire that I can't, I can't go to secondary school with my Quran, you know, not not at all anywhere, you know. So I know in secondary school I picked it up. I I, I told myself this is not this is just ridiculous. I can't I can't have this kind of Quran, um, reading this crawling right. So so I I picked it up again. I forced myself on it again, um, because of one and three that my mom had had uh. had had you know enforced on us right but she had left it to my grandmother without uh, for the younger ones you know she left it to my grandmother may Allah have mercy on her soul and for all that she has done for us my grandmother a lot of she did two and four a lot with us right i got a lot of two and four from her um i would see her i would really see her with her quran i would see her with her prayers um we would see her with her ratib and her and her istiqama Right, her continuity on it. She never missed it, you know. And and it's a story that I always say also, which which really affected me. Um, that when she passed away, uh, I was overseas. I was in Darim when she passed away. Um, and you know, when someone passes away and you're overseas, right, that that the soul is unable to accept it. Right? The soul cannot uh, reconcile it because you didn't see the janaza. Seeing the janaza helps a lot. I right? to know that someone's gone, right. And so basically, I had a dream. After she passed away, right, and in my dream, it brought me back to my old house where I grew up, you know, and and she was very, very, you know, central in my life, my grandmother, you know, and in my dream, and these are stories that I would tell the kids as well, you know, just to just to emphasize, it's just to you know impress upon them the importance of this. So in my dream, I saw her in um in the kitchen, you know, of my old house where I was primary school, you know, it was my primary school house. Right, so it, uh, in the whole house, right? So I saw her in my dream. Um, I entered the kitchen, you know, and I saw her. She was sitting there, and she was glowing, mashallah, in the kitchen. Um, and then I said to her in Malay, and I said to her, "Nani dah dah meninggal, nani you passed away already." And she said, "Yes, you know, yeah, nani dah meninggal, they passed away already." And then I asked her in the dream. I said to her, uh, "Nani dah pat cahaya Quran tak?" You know, like, nani, do you do you do you get the Do you get the light of the Quran in your grave? The baca hai Quran tak dalam kubur. Right? Do you get Do you get your the light of the Quran in your in your grave? And then my grandmother she said tapat. Right? There is it is there the light of the Quran there, is there? And she said and then cahaya tahajud pun ada. Right? And and the 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 light of night prayer as well. Quran and night prayer the two lights in the grave. 
you know, she told me in her dream, in this, in my dream, you know, mashallah. And this dream is vivid in my head, it's vivid, you know, and I feel it was a, you know, a closure for me, one thing. And also it was um, for me to relate also to people, right, that this is real. This is real. Quran is a companion for you. And I feel I'm being down to the parents, <laughs> right? But but you're do, you're gonna say this to your kids. This is what th- lessons do to you, right? They change you, they transform you, and you want to transform them, you know? Right? So you can see it's it's gonna be a light for you in your grave. You know how deep and scary the grave is. You know how dark the grave is. The Quran will come as your best friend, you know, and the Quran will be your will be your friend, right? Because you never left the Quran. So the Quran will come to you in your grief and say, you are my friend who never left me in this world. So now I'm going to be with you right, in the grave. Right? I'm, ne- I'm not going to leave you until I bring you with me to Jannah. And tell your kids this. Tell them. This is number one and three. One and three does this very strongly. You know, and, and they will be motivated by themselves. They want to. Don't you want the Quran to be your best friend? Don't you want on the day of judgment, the Quran will, will stick to you and the Quran will, will, will tell the angels of the hellfire, go away because this is my friend and, and, and I go wherever my friend goes and the Quran cannot go to the hellfire. I could, the Quran won't even go to the, to the paradise and the Quran will, 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 will speak for you. And it's from the hadith, it will be your intercession on the day of judgment. The Quran will intercede for you. He will talk for you. He will, he will, he will bring you right through to the, the front of the, of the queue and right into paradise because Quran is, is the VIP. You know, mashallah, he can bring you right up right to paradise. You know, mashallah, this is what you tell them. And the prayer will be a shining light for you on the day of judgment. The faster you rush to the prayer to pray the prayer, don't rush through the prayer, rush to the prayer, right? The faster you rush to the prayer, the faster you will cross the sirat. Do you know what is a sirat? Tell them, what is a sirat? Is this bridge over the hellfire. The faster you answer Allah when you hear the azan and you run to the prayer to pray, Right? Don't pray fast. I right? pray normally. Right? But you pray um soon. Or right? you pray soon. Right? So the faster you run to the prayer, the faster you go across the sirot. Don't you know that? Don't you want that? I right? to go across the sirot quickly. Ah, your prayer will, will determine that. I right? don't you know, mashallah. And then I have a few more minutes. I want to just <laughs> Um, uh, uh, go through very quickly now, I guess. I only have a few a few um uh, a few minutes left. Okay, so but so I'm just going to go step by step by the, about about prayer first. Okay, so relaying the importance. Um, so uh, Allah Muhammad. Okay, all right. So um, so first is this this from this is from number three. Okay, then now that go on to number four. Okay, so number one, number two, I just give three points each. There's a lot more to be said, but I don't want to spend so much time on it. All right, so but three and four. Um, it's coming here. Okay, so relaying the importance from as young as two years old until they die. It means as, as young as they can understand, even maybe before two, two even, right? To tell them stories, stories, stories. Teach the etiquette and the respect for salat. Right? Teach them to respect their prayer prayer garment, to respect their, you know, their tilawati or their, or their ikra. I will not mention a specific book um, to, to be used because there are many, many ways and many ways work um, uh, for to teach the Quran. Uh, it, many ways work, right? You know, it's like it's like you know a textbook. Many textbooks work. It depends on the teacher. <laughs> a lot of it, you know, hinges upon the teacher, than the book itself. It's just you, right? It's just you. <laughs> so, like, really, 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 a good teacher can pick up any book and teach it effectively. You know, and a lousy teacher you can give them, you can give them the best book, and it won't work. You know, it's just it's just the teacher, the teacher. Come on, so we've got to be good teachers, <laughs> inshallah. Um, stories, stories, stories. I have so many stories on Quran and 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 so on. So many, mashallah, <sighs> mashallah. It, our, Alhamdulillah, our tradition is not short of stories. We have so many stories from the Sahaba, from the companions, right? From the you know, from those that come after the Tabi'in, right? The the righteous, the Awliya. So many stories about Salat and Quran. And I don't know, I was thinking I want to tell you all stories, but I, think I have no time. Uh because I want to just give you like some ideas of what stories to tell, you know. Um but I think <laughs> A lot more. A lot of my classes, I I do speak about the stories, right? Um, so you can <laughs> tune in, <laughs> right? But maybe if you have time later on, I'll, I can share a few stories, you know, that that really 
from what I see of my children, it impacted them a lot, you know, mashallah, um, uh, with regards to to uh, praying like, and in regards to Quran. You know, one of the stories that I love um, is a story of, of a boy like, who used to pray at the very last minute. You know, he used to pray at the very last minute. Right? So he had a dream, you know, one day he had a dream um, whereby it was, it was a day of judgment. It's all true stories, eh? Right? It was a day of judgment. And you know, and and he heard the names of the of the people of the hellfire being called out, right? And 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 all of a sudden he heard his name being called out, and he screamed. He said, "No, no, no! But I I pray, I pray. No, you can't bring me to the hellfire. I pray, I pray." He always would pray at the very last minute. He would pray super fast, like really quickly. He would pray, you know. So I I tell the stories to my like older primary students, you know, around age of nine, ten. Right? That's when I, I bring these kind of stories to them. For younger ones, I would bring more positive stories right, to them. For older ones, I would bring more um, deterrent. Right? Stories that are deterrents. Right? Younger ones, more incentives. You know, um, Because for the older ones, it's just a matter of fighting the nafs. So basically, the, 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 his name was, was, was called out. You know, And then um, two huge angels, the Zabania, right? the angels of the hellfire, they come forward and they grab him by his arms. And they drag him into the hell. He's screaming and kicking and screaming and kicking the entire time. It's in his dream. He's screaming and kicking the entire time. And he was screaming, I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray. You know, and the angel says, no, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. Where's your prayer? We don't see your prayer. If you pray, your prayer will be right here to stop us. We don't see your prayer. Where is your prayer? You know, and and, and, and they, they drag him to the edge of the hellfire, you know, and they, and, and they throw him in. Into the hellfire, and as he's falling into this, 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 this end, this, this dark, you know, um, um, really, you know, a terrifying pit with a, with a stench that is emanating from it, you know, of of pus and blood, you know, this the hellfire, right? All of a sudden, you know, someone grabs him, right, by his by his collar, and he looks up and he sees a very old and frail man, and this man pulls him up with all of his might. Right, out of the this pit. And 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 he, he gets out of the pit and he looks at this very old and frail man, very weak and old frail man. And he says, Who are you? And the and the man says, I am your solat. And he says, Why do you come so late? I was about to be burnt. And the solat said, Don't you remember? You used to come to me late. You used to come to me last minute. And then he said, you know, you look so weak. I was afraid you couldn't pull me up. And the solat said, "That's because you didn't spend enough time on me. So I'm, I know I'm, I'm, I'm thin and I'm weak. I'm malnourished. You didn't spend much time on me. Right? So therefore, I am weak the way you see me." So he woke up from his dream. You know, Subhanallah. You know, and 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 ever since then, he never delayed his prayer to the last minute, and he would pray his prayer a full prayer. You know, instead of trying to, you know make it super fast he would pray his prayer full prayer this is the kind of stories and I know the, the children the, the children that I, that, that I say this to it affected them because I know from their parents <laughs> I get feedback from parents and like hey, my child now is praying on time <laughs> what happened in school <laughs> what happened in the madrasa <laughs> my child's praying on time what do you say to them All right, mashallah. And, and this is what things that, 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 that affect them stories and, and I'm sure right now as parents as adults that story probably affected you as well and you're like, you know, subhanAllah, I, I don't want my prayer to come last minute. I want it to come early and be with me the entire time. So prioritize the prayer. The prayer will prioritize you, you know, inshallah. So, so mashallah, um, I, on those who pray and the reward and the benefit in their lives. So, so all these positive stories first and then um, and then uh, uh, warnings, right? So I'll, I'll go both because the Quran does both. The Quran will always speak about those who are, you know, exemplars and those to, to, for you to seek, you know, um, lessons from, right? Those who do not pray and the punishment of suffering in their lives, right? So as young as two, you got to begin, you got to begin the entire, you know, storytelling, Right for them, you know, as young as two, right? But but you say the Quran is a light for for, for two year old, right? You say the Quran is a light, right? So a light, right? Brings you to Jannah. So there's a special place in Jannah for people who love to solat and love to pray. Right? Come and when they're younger, it's easier. When they get older, is when it's harder, <laughs> right? Because they have they they begin to form their own likes. When they're young, whatever you do is what they like. <laughs> 
Right, but when they're older, they form their own their, their own things that they like to do, right? Which might not be in line with what you like to do. Huh? And also love the Quran and always read it. It's like for them in this one and the next, and so on and so on, right? So you say all these things, stories, and also like you say, it's called fadail. Right? Fadail will be virtues, right? Virtues of such things. This is all tarbiyah. You gotta do this. That like you got to do this because this is what keeps them, you know, on it. Those who have left the Quran is darkness in their lives and is loss. Right? And then stories from the Quran to create attachment. Right? So stories about the Quran and stories from the Quran. There's two, two types of stories, okay? Stories about the Quran, right? About those who love the Quran and those who preserve the Quran and those who memorize the Quran and how it has helped them. You know, and then stories from the Quran itself, story of Nabi Adam, you know, um, from Surah Nas, about the Qanas, right, and, and so on. Right? So, and where do you get all these things from? Classes, right? Classes, classes, classes. You got to come for classes, right? And, and that's where you get all these stories from, inshallah. Okay, so step by step teaching the prayer, inshallah. I I know I know it's three thirty thirty eight now. I don't know how many how many questions there are on the on the question page, <laughs> but I I'll, I'll I'll go very quickly, inshallah. So below below six point five years, um, stories on the prayer, right? So below so below six point five, okay, below six point five. So as early as you can, right? as early as you can start start. I've got stories. Every child loves stories. So you can go as young as two, as three, as four. Every child loves to hear stories. Every adult, every human being right, loves stories. Um, the rewards prepared for those who pray. Um, uh, buy for them their own prayer garments. Right, I would say maybe at around age of four or five. Right, prayer garment for them, what they like, a color they like. Siwak, prayer mat, make it special for them. Um and teach them how to perform the wudu with songs. All right, my my niece, I just went with her one day. I say, okay, listen to me, okay? I say, hands, mouth, nose, and face, arms, hair, yes, and legs. <laughs> Very easy, right? <laughs> so she's like, hands, mouth, nose, and face, arms, hair, yes, and legs. Da, memorize it already. All right, so whenever she's in the toilet, she goes, she goes, hands, mouth, nose, and face, arms, hair, yes, and legs. Da. Memorized. <laughs> Literally, I said it once to her and she memorized it. You know, mashallah. And not until today, she's like, hands, mouth, nose and face, arms, hair, yes, and legs. <laughs> it was how I memorized when I was young. That was my, my tune when I was young. I go, hands, mouth, nose and face, arms, hair, yes, and legs. Then, <laughs> So, voodoo. <laughs> right. Um, make them do their voodoo. Okay, you're not going to check them yet. Just gonna make them go through the motions. Right? Checking comes later on. Because if you if you if you if you're gonna you know be uh, check on them too young, they're unable to do it. Right? Because they're too young. Right? So when they're older, so until 6.5 years. At 6.5, you're gonna check them right, about their wudu. Um you pray in front of them. Right? You always pray in front of them and remind them to pray with you. Get them to pray with you. That's the best way. Um if you can, especially for your sunnah prayers recite loud enough for them to hear right so they will be hearing that you are reciting in your prayer the the formal memorization comes later on right but for now it's just the entire motions of it to make it habitual right to make it habitual right and then show affection right children thrive on affection right so when they do pray with you hug them kiss them have them sit in your lap you do zikr together do du'a together and so on right show a lot of affection you know, and a lot of times it's enough for them as a reward that they get affection, right, from you, right? And then always mention to, mention to them over and over again that seven years old is the golden age. <laughs> and seven is Hijri, eh? Not, not Masihi, it's Hijri. So when, when, so when I say 6.5, 6.5 Hijri. So if your child is born in Muharram, right, six months before Muharram, okay? <laughs> so you're not going by July, you're going by Muharram, right? So you're going to see, you know, what, what at what month in the Hijri month, right? So we're not, all these ages uh, given to us by, by the Prophet is not um, <laughs> Gregorian, it's Hijri, okay? So you're going to see when when they, when, when will they turn seven, uh, Hijri, right, Hijri. And you tell them about their, their Muslim birthday, right? So you're born on this, on, on Zul Zulqa'ada, Zul Hijjah, and I hope you know when your kids were born, right, on which Muslim birthday, on which Muslim dates, on which you know, history dates, like they will have to pray all five. So they will have they will be mentally prepared. So they know seven years old is the age. Right? Seven years old is the age where I must pray completely full. Right? Um so at six point five. 
at 6.5. The stories on prey and rewards continue all the way till they're adults, right? <laughs> MashaAllah. You continue, you continue the stories because this is what keeps you motivated, right? Okay, at 6.5, check and correct their wudu. It means strict, right? Strict, right? So you sit down, right? You go to wudu again with them, you point out certain things, then you go to the bathroom and you watch them. You watch them and you correct them at different parts. Right, so and and just just a few weeks ago, I was doing this with the kids in Masjid Khalid, you know, um, the primary one kids with the wudu and the primary two kids with the wudu, and so many of them, so many of them, right? They wash the front part of their face without the sides. A lot of kids do this. They don't wash up till the ears. You see, you're talking about prayer, right? Don't go into prayer without wudu. Your wudu is gonna be right. You gotta check their wudu first. Don't skip this step. It's very important, right? So, of course, with the students and the siwa and so on. And I will go through with them so many times, you know, their wudu. When, when I watch them, they're still doing it because it's habitual. It's habitual. So, you got to correct them, all right? So, tell them, you, know, you, you got to wash up to your ears. You know, you can't just leave your, 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 your very cute chubby cheeks. <laughs> right? Your cheeks going to be wet. You know, and a lot of them, a lot of children, um, their arms, right, their, uh, at the part of the elbow is completely dry. <laughs> a lot of them, I will, I will literally hold their arm and I will turn it around and I show, see, very dry. <laughs> I will use a tissue and I wipe there and I see that the tissue comes out dry. Whereas it's not wet, you know, much, a lot of them, right, a lot of them. And, and unfortunately, this continues into adulthood for a lot of people. And then their prayers are all not valid. Right, so just be very, very um vigilant about this. And so you're gonna check their wudu several times. Right. So like maybe every month, once a month, I right, check their wudu. Right. So to ensure they get it. Because it is habitual. So even if you correct it one time, it will go back to it. They they'll go back to their mistake. Right. So do this. Okay, now number three, I know this, this as I said, it's 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 a traditional method, right? Which is so good. <laughs> you know, mashallah. It's such a good method, you know. And you might think, can I do this? You know what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you. You put in your, your intentions, right, and do this. You and your husband. This is these are your children. They are your amana. They are your responsibility. Nothing else in your life is more important than to bring them up well as Muslims. Nothing is more important. Right? If your work is taking up all of your time, you really gotta think about it. And you really gotta think about it because spend some time with your kids. You you and your husband. The man is not is not free of this. Huh? This is actually on the man to teach the kids um to pray, <laughs> right? But together as husband and wife, right? Have a family lesson. I put once a day because that is what is traditional. Once a day, at least once a day. If you find it very heavy on you to do it once a day, then maybe once every two days or once every three days, right? But you gotta have a a a, a, con a consistent lesson. You know, uh, you know, uh, istiqama. You know, on istiqama, we gotta have a lesson, a family lesson. That is why, the number one, you have to be continuously learning, because you have to be imparting this. So, but I send my child to to madrasa, yes, and as a madrasa teacher, I can tell you once a week, I can't, I can't help so much. I can teach them, yes, but I can't implement it for them. Right, the parents have to do it. I, I only see your child once a week. And for one and a half hours, you know, and 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 half the time I'm doing stories with them, I'm I'm doing tarbiyah with them, I'm doing akida with them. I I can't I can't do this. I don't have the time for it, in in the in the madrasa setting. I only the parent can do this, right? So in this lesson, you know, and I'm and I'm giving you like a lesson plan. Huh? <laughs> it's a full lesson plan. Right? It's really the traditional method, you know. So you check and you correct surah fatiha, and you know what surah fatiha? You're gonna be doing this several times, several times. The checking and the correcting of Surah Fatiha. Because again, habitual. Habitual mistakes. Especially from, from a very young age, you should be doing this. You know, but I put a 6.5. Because um, uh, a lot of people, uh, you know, tend to go into 8 years old and they're still not checked. So, but if you can do it younger, do it younger. But again, then again, children, they they they, they stumble over letters in Arabic. Right? So usually around 6.5 at 6.5 age, um, years, years old, they can pronounce most of the letters properly. I I know at four or five, you know, a lot of kids still struggle with a lot of letters, right? But at six point five, you can kind of train it up on uh, for them, right? Um, Fatiha, second lesson, check and correct the intention. How are they doing that yet? For wudu as well, eh? So when you correct their wudu, you're gonna correct all. Eh, I didn't put it here, but everything to do with wudu, you gotta you gotta you know check on them, 
right? everything you know with regards to their, their, their intention their dua after their, 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 their wudu the sunnas the dua after wudu um, you know and then and then you know what nullifies wudu all of these things at 6.5 years old you're going to speak to them use, use, use flashcards there are many many resources out there but you have to do it you or parents have to do it right it's the, the, you're the best person because you know sometimes I, I, I have a class of, of students and I have to check all of them it's a lot on a teacher to do and I was thinking to myself that if I had my own children you know I would really really be more thorough in checking them because as, as, as teachers for students you have no choice you know but to check what is minimum you know or maybe a, a bit more but you can't be completely thorough because otherwise you know you will spend half an hour on each student <laughs> But if you're a parent, you have, you can do that because you're the parent. You can spend that time and you can speak to them, right? So um, now, then number three, I'm going to go quick, quick faster. Recite the suggestions of the prayer out together, right? So this is not in prayer, you know. It's not in prayer, but it's in the class, in the lesson. So literally, literally, right, for one of the lessons, you go, you go, okay, Ruko, what do we recite? Together, come. Subhana Rabbi al Azimi wa bihamdi. Subhana Rabbi al Azimi wa bihamdi. Subhana Rabbi al Azimi wa bihamdi. Right, so you do that. Okay? Or you're going to say the dua if it's like you say, so, so when you pray, Allahu Akbar. So you're not in prayer, you're just practicing the recitations together. It's called talqeen. Right? Talqeen means I recite, you recite. I recite, you recite. I transfer this knowledge to you correctly. Right, so I say, Allah Akbar Kabiro, Walhamdulillahi Kathiro, Wa Subhanallah, Bukrata, Wa Asila, Wa Jahatu Wajhi, and so on. I, I go in that way. If you can't do it, you gotta learn to do it. But if you really can't, then of course, online, there's so many resources whereby you can find, you know, step by step prayer and you can use all these resources. You can find it online. But you know what? With children, they love it if it's just a person teaching them and not a video. I did it. They, they, they are affected more if it's a human being teaching them. So you learn it and you and then you teach them, right? So then, and, and in this order, right? So in, in this order. So you, you go, you repeat dua iftita for a few lessons until, until they are fluent. Then they do talking of you. So they read and then you read and, and then you read. So you see if they are correct. Right? And then you do it and, and so on. And so on. Including dua kunut. Including dua kunut. They are old enough to memorize it. Children can memorize a lot. You know, a lot of my kids have memorized this amma by the age of six point five or seven, right? So, it, so the children can. It's a matter of it's a matter of of talqin. You know, talqin is basically you recite, they recite, you recite, they recite, you recite, they recite, and that is the most correct way of 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 transmitting knowledge that they get it correct, right? Reading, right, will not be correct, right? Uh, talqin, you know, whereby you recite and they recite, they'll be correct. If you fear your recitation to be wrong and they will pick it they'll pick it up from you <laughs> then of course you can use a, a a video you know on youtube to play for them then the two of you recite right together mashallah okay at 6.5 again uh very quickly through this entire thing um so check each position so again so these are, all, these are your lesson plans eh so it's like every week one um lesson one lesson, one lesson. You see, it's six. It's six. I put it as six. So you could you could spend six months on this, right? Six months if you want to, right? Uh, really, you know, there's a, you see, there's six, there's six things to do, right? In the lesson plan, then one, two, three, right? And then four, five, six. So literally, you have six months before seven seven years old <laughs> to get this in. You know, and of course, if you, if you need more time, in sh Alhamdulillah, you have till nine years old or ten. Right, so so again, all of this has to be done at six point five, not all on one day, of course. As I, as I mentioned, over six months, or you're given six months to really go through this, which is why it's essential to have a lesson with your children regularly. A regular, who's gonna teach them all these things? Yes, you can send them to school. Yes, but as the as a teacher, I can tell you, I can't implement it for them. You implement it for them. I can teach them, but I can't implement it right, for them because I'm not with them. All right, so you can teach all this stuff, you know. And again, go you learn from a teacher, so you are correct in your transmission, right? And also after the prayer, right? After the prayer, what do you recite? And read it together again. Talqin. Astaghfirullah. 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 Allahumma anta salam. Omin ka salam. Wa ilayka yaudu salam. Rabbana taqabal minna. Inna ka anta samiyyu alaim. Atikursi. Tell them about atikursi that that there is nothing between you and 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 Jannah. 
uh, you know, except for passing away for the one who reads ayat the kursi after every prayer. Then the tasbih, right? Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allah akbar. Then dua. Teach them some essential duas. Rabbana atina fi dunya. Right, that one. Rabbi ghfirli wa li walidayya. That one. Right, and a few. In Fatiha. Six months, eh? Right, six months to, to teach all of these things. I know I'm rushing through. I actually want to spend more time on this, but yeah, mashallah. Um, put up a prayer chart. I right, put up a prayer chart. Get them to promise that they will not miss one of the prayers each month. So for example, the first the first the first month at six point five years old, first month they promise um and I'm going by month, eh? It's enough, it's enough. Month, one whole month. So they promise Zohor. So they can pray other prayers and you encourage them to pray other prayers, but Zohor cannot miss. Zohor cannot miss. So every day must pray Zohor. And you, and you must see and you must check every day. Have you done your Zohor? Have you done your Zohor? So the following month they promise Maghrib. Okay, Zohor and Maghrib must be full full ticks. The other prayers you can pray, you know, and I encourage you to pray. You know, and sometimes sometimes they, they are more motivated. They can actually do two if they want to. You know, and then um and you can even give them a like an incentive that once you get all five in for a full month, I get you I get you a gift, kind of thing. So you kinda of push them, you know, on it. Um then uh uh so for for six months. So by five months you've gone gotten all five prayers in anyway. You know, mashallah. And then and then and then to be consistent thereafter. Okay, at seven till nine years old. At seven, I really recommend they said that I see that the righteous people do. They have a prayer party <laughs> to show that they have come into the age of prayer. Right? A prayer party. So usually you give them like like a nice, you know, hijab. No, not hijab, a nice telekong, a nice a nice onko, and they choose themselves, you know, a nice sajada, like a big, a big adult one, not, not a baby one, okay? A big adult sajada. And then, you know, like, like in a sense, you make it, you make, give them like a siwak case, you know, do your siwak before your prayer and so on. Um, um, then do a wudu test for them. They have to go through a wudu test right, and you give them points and a reward, right? So like, it's like a test, you know, mashallah. Prayer test as well. Let them pray out loud. Also give points and reward. It really matters, you know, because they will revise. Examinations have, have benefit. I, I, I'm a strong believer in examinations <laughs> right, because they make people memorize stuff. If you're, if you're not tested, you don't memorize properly. When you're tested, you memorize properly. You know, so prayer chart uh, still up at, to put the mark on because they got to get full, you know, prayers every single day. Keep reminding them at 7 to 9, right? If they show laziness and resistance, then you can bring the stories of punishment, right? Because, because now it's, it's enough. So there has to be deterrent, right? To push them on the prayer and always pray together as far as, as, far as you can. And yeah, I mentioned about those whose kids are in school care. Speak to the school, you know, and see what you can do with regards to their prayer, you know, and just make, make sure that it is important. So, you, and, and in doing so, you are relaying to them that even when you're in school, you pray, right? Just now, one of the kids said to me that, oh, he's, he has two, he, he's primary one, for goodness sake. And he said that, I said, I asked him, why are you not praying in these prayers? And he said, oh, I got homework. And I, I asked the class, how long do you all take to do homework? And they're like, then some of them are like, nine minutes. Oh, nine minutes to homework. You know, some of them are like, ten minutes, you know, do homework. How long is your whole day? So long, right? So can you pray five times a day? Yes, you can. Homework's not an excuse. But it's because of the mentality. You know, I have homework. Some of them didn't pray Isha at all. You know, they don't pray Isha at all. And I say, why don't you pray Isha? Tired. What time do you sleep? 9.30, 10 o'clock. Isha is 8.30. You can very well pray Isha at 8.30. It's not, you know, just pray Isha. It's a mentality. It's a mentality. Then again, parents going to be on it. Right? Okay, then I'm just going to uh, zoom through this. Uh, above 9 till puberty, right? This is when you throw the ball. You're going you're gonna, to, very soon, you're going to throw the ball into their court because you can't keep, you know, chasing them till their teenage years. They have to take responsibility over their own akhirah. It's something that I will always emphasize on my teenagers. I teach teenagers. And I will always emphasize on them, your parents are not responsible for your akhirah. You are responsible for your own akhirah. You want to pray, you want to, you want to pray subo? You put your alarm. You're smart enough to do so. You're old enough. Right? You get your zuhur in check. You get your, your asa, your maghrib, your isha. Your parents should have no need to follow up on this because you are an adult. You get to your CC on time, right? You go for class for school on time, you're, you're in secondary school, you should know all these things. So I'll be very firm on, on those who are above puberty. 
you know, I'm clear to them that they have to answer to Allah about their prayers. Uh, it's you and Allah. Uh, you don't answer to your parents, you answer, you answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, and they should have a full understanding about their prayer. You know, um, um, to the point whereby my primary one today, you know, and I was, uh, and one of them was saying, oh, I'm so tired to pray subuh. I'm so sleepy. I'm so tired. And I said, what time do you wake up for school? Six o'clock. Pray lah tu raka'at subuh. And then he was like, yeah, but sleep, I'm so sleepy. I'm like half, not, not really awake or so. I go to school, so I sleep in the car. Then I said, just take a shower, right? Take your wudu. Pray to rakats is the most important thing for you to do. Again, eh, number one, number three. And number one, number three, the emphasis right, on it. And I really, today I really impressed very strongly on my, on my primary ones because <laughs> there's so many of them are not praying. Uh, I impressed so very strongly on them. And I said, next week I want to check. So every week I will check your prayer chart. Right, and don't lie to me, okay? Even if you lie to me and you, and you put a tick there, Allah knows, right? Allah knows if you prayed it. Right, so you're not trying to show Ustazah, you're going to show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is going to see this to you. Allah is going to see this. On the day of judgment, Allah will ask for your prayer chart. Right? He's not going to ask for, for, for you know, your homework. Do your homework, yes. But your prayer chart is the most important thing that you have to get done. You know, inshallah. Um, now, um, uh, classes should always continue. Right? So even if it's not with you, they have to go for a formal class to always continue. <sighs> Alhamdulillah, I'm already 4 o'clock. Eh? <laughs> I'm going to just go and zoom through this. Lie. Um, okay, as young as possible. I'm going to as young as possible. Even when they're in your belly, when they're still in your belly, right? Um, when, when you have not given birth to them, that's the best time. You know, to expose them to all this great stuff, this good stuff, is when the best time is when they're inside of you. Because <laughs> they can't run anywhere. <laughs> right? they're, just, they're just in you. So you can just go to all the classes and all the, you know, especially the first one. So the first one gets a lot because there's no other kid <laughs> around. <laughs> so the first one, like, you can bring him everywhere in your belly and have no child to, to have to think about, you know, mashallah. Right, so anyway, expose them to the Quran Recitation from a qari, right? From a qari, a proper reciter, right? Um, unless you are a qari uh, or your husband's a qari, right? But I, like I would say, don't you, you don't be the one with regards to memorization, right? You don't be the one, but like, play someone that they can copy exactly because they will copy the tajweed as well. So get a nice qari that you like, you know, as on YouTube. Play that in the morning. And between Maghrib and Isha, or at night, I play at least half an hour of it, right? So while they're having their breakfast or while they're playing, you know, whatever they're doing, play the Quran for them, right? Um, uh, and this really helps, really helps from the back. I right? short surahs, eh? right? So from as young as possible, you can pray, play from the back. Then by the age of five, I can tell you they've memorized most of it. They would have memorized most of the surahs. You know, you see, I'm I have not mention anything about about teaching teaching reading yet okay this is this is traditional method okay traditional method below the age of six or seven basically time is mumayis below the age of mumayis they focus on memorization 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 without reading this is very traditional right they focus on memorization without reading then at mumayis at tamiz then they introduce reading right and and i've seen children this is really what they need if you introduce reading too young, you're going to frustrate the child. You know, especially boys. You will frustrate them because they're not ready. Right? And I'll say in all languages, not just Arabic, all languages, you can frustrate them when their mind is not developed enough. And you frustrate them and they get upset. They think they're underachievers. They think they're not clever. They think all kinds of things. But the, the matter is they're not old enough. They're not ready. The mind's not ready. You got to wait for tamis. Right, so you can do these letters early on if you want, because letters are just fun, you know. But traditional method, memorization the entire time, and memorization corrects their their articulation when they hear the qari recite, and you can also correct it as well, you know. And memorization gives them a, a natural inclination, right, towards hearing Quran, right, all the time because they're just spending the entire life. Memorization fills you with Quran. It fills you up with Quran. Memorization. So I would say get them started on Surah Fatiha, Nas, and upwards, and tell stories of the surahs because Sujat they make sense to them and they love the Quran. You begin their love, you know, um, journey with the Quran. 
you know, from from in, in this way, memorization and stories, memorization and stories. I just this all the way. Then at six or seven, this is when I would say begin the reading, right? So and really any book teaching, um, uh, reading of Arabic or Tajweed, all of the books I find so far are usable. They're all just they're all usable. You know, as a teacher, I find they're all usable, <laughs> right? So I mean, a lot of them, you know, I, I've used several, and I I just find it. MashaAllah. There are many ways of doing it. And sometimes I just use my own whiteboard and teach them straight out. Right? So, um, and when their mind is ready, they will learn to read so quickly. You know, MashaAllah. When their mind is ready, they will learn to read so quickly. You know, when their mind is not ready, that's when you feel like it's, it's torture. You know, they, they just can't, they can't, they keep forgetting, they can't do it. They, they, their mind is not, it's not, it's not, built to learn to read yet their mind is built to absorb and memorize at a young age that's what they're doing they're memorizing things from you right for english they've memorized a lot of english from age zero right to the age where you teach them to read right they've learned a lot of english right and then you teach them to read and they know these words already and then reading becomes easy for them same thing same thing, memorization. So when you learn to read, they, they, they're they familiar with the surahs. You know, and it helps them, inshallah. And it especially builds up their confidence and their love and their attachment to the Quran. So make sure the time for them is fixed every day so they will not miss it. Right? So make sure it's fixed and together with your own schedule, you know, make uh, make sure. Right? And then to continue memorizing of surahs that are repeated often. Right? So basically, if you don't want to put your child on on on, on hefas, you know, on, on full memorization, you know, I would just say, get them on just amma. Right, as far as you can, <laughs> right? And you know what? They can really go far. I know of parents whereby the kids have memorized full this amma and they have not. <laughs> the, the kids have memorized the full of this amma and they have not memorized it. The parents, you know, subhanAllah. And then make them memorize surahs that are repeated often like surah Yasin, surah Waqi'ah, surah Muluk. This will help them when they are older, right? To implement these surahs, right? So, so I would say just go on surahs that are repeated often because you don't know if they want to commit to um Quran memorization. Right? So if they if they show an interest then you can you can find you know um uh, you can find um support for this in Singapore of tahfiz right if you find that they have an interest in it. Right? But if you find it it's just really very hard on them and or they have no interest in it, then just be sufficed with surahs that are repeated often. Right. So Yasin, Waqi'an, um Muluk, Sajda, Dukhan, um uh, Kahfi, right? So the, the, the main surahs, eh? and so on, mashallah. Okay, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so I think I took the entire two hours. Um, hmm, Bismillah. So, so, so I, that, that is all I have to share. Just so much more to share, but I and I really apologize. Um, if I did not uh meet up to what you expected, um, and I hope it was it was it was useful for all of you. Um, wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Alhamdulillah thank you Ustazah for the insightful and enriching sharing uh, I'm sure many of us have questions but due to the time constraint I believe we can only take about three to five questions uh, let me share the screen for a moment okay is everyone able to see the questions Okay, uh, from the bottom up, actually, is um, from the bottom is the very first questions that have been sent. Um, Staza, do you wish to choose the three to five questions, or would you like me to choose? I think you can choose. <laughs> okay, all right. Do you tell them about the liking thing? The liking thing is like if majority want me to answer that question, mm -hmm. you can like it. Oh yes, yes, right. yes. So, uh. Just uh, give a few seconds for those of you already in Slido. You can take a look at the questions. Due to the time constraint, we'll only answer um, the the most liked questions. And I'll also choose the, the relevant one that I believe that uh, all of us can benefit from also. <clears throat> uh, okay. I think there's, um, there's one here for... Asking if she if we should recite the Quran in front of them because the young ones always demand attention while we recite. I believe this is more for mothers who have uh young, young children. children. Yeah, mm -hmm. you recite it uh when they are busy 
uh, you know, when they're busy with their own activities. So like, if they're playing, you know, or you know what, I know one mother used to, would do, she would recite Quran that she has memorized. So it could be something simple. Don't have to like, I have not memorized anything. No, you have memorized. You have memorized Fatiha, you memorize Nas, Falak, you know, Ikhlas. So while she feeds her children, she recites Quran. You know, she's reciting Quran while she's feeding her children or dressing them up and so on. She recites Quran, right? So you could do it when they're doing their own activities. So or they're playing with their blocks and everything. So you play with them. So memorizing does help a lot, lah, I would say. <laughs> because you can just do it off the cuff, you know. But, but you know, and then do what your, your regular ones. Or maybe you play the Quran and you follow it. So, for example, if you have a, a habit of doing Yasin every morning, for example, right? So, it's like, oh, I have not memorized Yasin. But you know that you know it enough that if it's played, you can follow it. I mean, most of us are there. Right? If, if we know, we kind of know Yasin enough that if you're hearing someone recite it, you can kind of follow it. Right, so you you can be playing blocks with them, you know, playing something with them, and your mouth is reciting the Quran, right? And and they will see it, right? They will see it, right? So if you find that, well, of course, if you if they can play by themselves, then you can be reading the Quran by the by the by the side, you know, suddenly, as opposed to using your phone, as some parents do, you know, their kids are there and they're using their phone, right? So you're holding the mushaf, and they can come and you can and you can can kind of like do it together, right? In a sense, then it's the Quran time. Nice Quran time for you. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Next question is if our young child, four to six years old, still drag their feet to solat despite emphasizing on consistency, how can we motivate without using threats? Yeah, that's the number one, number three, right? Remember? Number one and number three, right? So you're jumping to four. In this, you're jumping to four. That's why they're dragging their feet. Right, so um, uh, I so 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 I I will not use threats because that's not in the hadith. The hadith does not allow us to do anything with them um before the age of ten, right? So four to six, you cannot touch them, um, in any way. <laughs> They're four to six. So what you can do is um to really emphasize the importance by stories. You gotta know stories. You gotta know stories. So the, and that, that and and you can really you know um keep seeing it, seeing it, seeing it. You know, um, tell all these stories, uh, to them, right? And on again, again, you know, because they are they are four to six, right? Am I seeing four to six? Is it was it four to six? Yeah, four to six. If they're dragging their feet, is normal lah. They're four to six. <laughs> <laughs> is they're not they're not being disobedient. They they are four to six. That's why the hadith begins at seven. Right, at four to six is just encouragement, stories, love, encouragement, affection. If they just don't 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 want to do anything, they will lie down lie down in front of you as, as you pray. Okay, the 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 Sharia does not require anything of them. <laughs> They're not doing anything wrong. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, okay, next question. Uh, I think. There's one. Uh, Assalamualaikum Ustazah. Thank you for the informative session. Any books that you can recommend on prophetic parenting? They used to have a very good book, you know, on educating children in Islam. But it's been sold out for the longest time. They start, I think they stopped printing it. Um, I have the Arabic is available. Um, There's the one that I'm, that I'm using for this class, uh, Radio Sibian. Radio Sibian, right? But uh, the English one was, it was really awesome, mashallah. Um, but I think they just stopped printing it. You could have, you can find it online. It's called Educating Children, um, in Modern Times, right? And it's based on a very traditional text that we learn in Tarim, right? Um, uh, by Sheikh Abdul Aziz Al I think that's by him. But I think they stopped printing it. Really, you can write to into him to see why they stopped printing it. <laughs> Maybe the demand's too low. I don't know. So that's Islamic books. It's the demand just too low. But that is one book that I really would highly recommend. Um, highly recommend. I do teach it in my in my parenting class. Uh, online, I did teach it. Not do I did. <laughs> I finished it. Um, yeah. But the book. And I know many people have listened to that class and they ask me where's the what what book is it? And then I just to to tell them that it's longer in, in publishing. <laughs> so, uh, next question. I think we can take like three more questions. Uh, one is where can I find recitations of the Quran for children? Is there a link? As you mentioned, um, to play the recitations mm, on the background so yes. they can hear the Kauri recite. There's a lot online. 
um on YouTube a lot. You just search Quran recitation. You can even put um kanak kanak. I think the Malays have to have better um resources, right? Untuk kanak kanak, or you can see uh, for children. There's a lot, a lot. You have a spot for choice, so you can kind of hit, listen to each of them. I like you know um. Abdullah Basfar, that's the one that I I prefer. But I I know many people have different different like different likings, right? So um no, <laughs> so you can just go on on YouTube. There's a lot. It's really a lot on YouTube. Okay, two highly voted questions. One is would playing Quran while the children are playing eating teach them to just put the Quran as a background noise rather than something that is important? No, on the contrary, <laughs> on the contrary. It would actually um uh, uh it would actually you know um associate their heart with good feelings, right? So when they're playing and they're eating, right, they're having very good feelings. They're having happiness in them, right? So the Quran is not background noise, but the Quran is um basically it is associated to the to the feel good feelings is going on in them, right? So it, um it is not it's not at all. And in fact, in fact, the soul will be feeding on the Quran. And they will memorize it as well, right? So it's not um, yeah. On the I would say on the contrary, right? In fact, it's on the contrary. That's good. I was also uh curious about that. <laughs> okay, yeah. another one last question. Um, I'm a single mom, and my periods can be ten days at a time. During this period, I can't lead my kids in prayer. How do I explain to my children to? Pray when I can't. I think this is can also be applicable for any mothers lah. Like in the case that their husbands are not at home. Yeah, that's yeah. correct. Mashallah. Right. So in this in this situation, um, we do explain to the children that that um uh you can't pray, right? Uh, because Allah says I cannot pray, right? Because and it, it asks why, say right? Because you know uh inshallah, and when you're older, you will find you will you will know. You can see that way. And I know of some kids whereby um their parents. Their, their mother has told them, right? Because I have blood, they will just say that I have blood, right? Uh, without 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 emphasizing or without explaining more. Allahu alam if that's the best method. But I will just for me, I will just tell children that, um, because Allah says, and it's true, Allah does say you can't pray. <laughs> I, I Allah say I cannot pray for now because I'm on menses. I will tell them the I will tell them the word menses. I'm on menses. I cannot pray. When I finish menses, I can pray. I will just say that to them, right? But I will say that you can pray. Uh, you must, you can pray. Right? So I want to watch you pray. Uh, that kind of thing. Like, and, and you can, and you can in a sense, you, you, don't, you can't lead them, but you can guide them. So you can say, okay, stand. How do we need to uh, solely further? So you, 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 in fact, I find that on menses, I'm better able to teach the prayer <laughs> because I don't pray. <laughs> so I'm actually better able to hear them and to watch them and to correct them when I'm on my menses. <laughs> I think that's be all for the time that we have for Q&A. Mm -hmm. Is there any question that caught your eye that you wish to answer? Um, yeah, let me open the thing. Yeah. Okay, I just want to just, you know, emphasize that for to see, you know, have mercy on them. The religion has mercy, you know, on children. Have mercy, right? Um, Teaching you require mercy. As Allah subhanahu wa says, Ar-Rahman, Allama al-Quran, Khalaq al-Insan, Allama al-Bayan. Right? Allah says, Ar-Rahman. The trait of mercy is from that trait that you teach. Right? So if you're going to be harsh and, and firm, you're going to chase people away from you. Right? Especially for the young ones. You're going to come with mercy. Okay. Um. Let me see. Uh, the podcast is is on my podcast. <laughs> It's on my YouTube also. You can find it there. I think someone can search out a link later on, inshallah. Um, let me see if I can see if I want to. You're not allowed to be physical with your child. Nowhere in, in Islam have prophets, and definitely not our prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, use any form of physical um, uh, methods uh, for for discipline. Right? So even when we're hitting at 10, 10 years old, that's with a siwak, and it's more of disciplining and not hurting. Like hurting children is completely haram to hurt children. You cannot. Okay. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you. It's a lot, lot of, a lot of, I'm looking through it. A lot of, a lot of good yeah. questions. Lah. 
Like like yeah. some people, look, you know, taking away privilege because they want to pray. Depending on their age, it really depends on their age. So if this is a, a nine year old, right, and you're taking away the privilege of TV, then I say good, right. For seven to seven seven up, right, you can have punishment on them. But below seven, no. Below seven, no. Right. Uh, I would say nine and up. Nine and up, you can have punishment because that's what the hadith says. The hadith goes by ten actually. In fact, ten and up. Right. Uh. So below that, no. <laughs> and you know what? If you've been emphasizing the prayer on them since they were very, very young, by the time they're ten, you know, uh, they share some sense, lah. I mean, I would think, right? <laughs> you would think. <laughs> no. Um. Playing Quran when they're going to sleep is a good thing. It's a good thing. Uh. Right. If you can't read by yourself, then you can always uh play. It's okay. Okay. Right, so Nifas head again. Um stories, tell stories. I don't know any story books that I recommend. Huh? <laughs> Anyone has any any recommended story books? Actually I'm just reading all through all the stories. <laughs> all through all the questions. Um okay, lah, I guess so. <laughs> I think we just stopped there. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of questions. <laughs> this is got kick up <laughs> Thank you again, Saza, and everyone for attending and participating. Mashallah, I think even myself, I benefited from listening in. And that's, uh, hopefully, you, uh, our participants will keep in touch with Fitria on their social media platforms to know about future programs. And that is all. Uh, thank you again, everyone, for your time today. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Apologies, Saza, do you have any close, closing dua for us? <laughs> Inshallah. May Allah subhanahu yeah, okay. wa ta'ala make our children of uh, of those who, who establish the prayer. And, and we, as, as Nabi Ibrahim made dua in the Quran, Ya Allah, make me of those who establish prayer. And amongst my children, Ya Allah, and answer my prayers. And may Allah make, make, make the Quran a light in their hearts. And, make, and may Allah use their bodies to 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 uh, obey the Quran. May Allah use expand their chest by the Quran. May Allah guide them in this life with the Quran. May Allah make them of people of Salat and Quran such that this too will come for them in their grief and on a day of judgment and in, 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 in paradise we will be united with the one who loved the Salat and the one who brought the Quran our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa Sallallahu Ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa Ala Ali wa Sahabi Wasallam Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Thank you everyone Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh